Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to this episode of the Role of Play. Uh, for this session, we are going to be returning to uh, Wonderland and the Feywild. Uh, this is actually the first time we've done a follow-up or a sequel to one of our games. So the very first game we played was Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And this time we're going to be returning to that story with the same characters and players. Uh, and they are going to be going through a new adventure that is sort of roughly based on Through the Looking Glass and what Alice found there. I'm Jonathan Bradley. I'm the head of Studios and Innovative Technologies for the University Libraries, and I will be your Game Master for this session. But before we dive into the actual game, let's introduce our players, uh, and we will start with Alice. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Alice Rogers, manager of the Media Design Studios here at Virginia Tech. Uh, I do... Uh, all kinds of things uh, related to media and making and play. And today I'll be uh, playing the character Arla Crabtree, who is a female rock gnome druid. She uses she, her pronouns. Uh, and she, uh, she's circle, circle of the land forest, uh, the forest designation, I think. Um, and yeah, I don't know if you, you'll find out more about her in the story, but she really likes mushrooms. Then that's really her defining characteristic. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and <coughs> jump order here and go to Benny because he's waiting off screen for a big reveal. <laughs> so this is Max. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. <laughs> I'm Max Alza. I uh, run a 3D design studio, much to Jonathan's chagrin. Um, here in the university libraries, uh, my day to day is mostly dealing with serving patrons by 3d printing fun things and, uh, helping them with their school projects. Um, tonight I'll be playing or this evening, this evening I'll be playing, uh, Benedict Cavill Jr. or Benny. Uh, he's a wizard investigator extraordinaire, very intelligent. I mean, just sharp as a tack. And uh, he's ready to come back in and help this uh, wayward, lost person that they have previously encountered. Nice. Thank you. Uh, next, we will go to Anthony. Yeah, uh, I'm Anthony Wright de Hernandez. Um, and I am playing uh, Emissary Thrum. They are a Loxodon Ranger, um, Horizon Walker subclass. Uh, they are a large elephantine individual. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what else was I supposed to say? Oh, I'm an archivist here. I also do a show on this same channel uh, currently Wednesdays at 2.30 p.m. called Archival Adventures. Um, there should be some VODs uh, down below us somewhere. Um, I'm also a streamer in my own right. I have my own channel at Rogan27 on Twitch, so feel free to find me over there for some gaming streams occasionally. Um, that's all I have to say for introductions. Excellent. And Danny. Hi, um, I'm Danny Chowan. Um, I'm one of the student workers at the uh, Virginia Tech University Library Studios. And um, I'm studying human development and communication sciences. So through the library studios, I've uh, worked with helping patrons with projects. Um, but then I have also, um, right now I've been doing remote work with making some digital uh, media content for, um, for the library. And you're gonna be playing. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be uh, playing Lydia Amastasia. She is a wood elf. She's a fighter, um, and she really enjoys foraging and living uh, in the woods amongst nature and is very optimistic and a very carefree spirit. Thank you. Uh, and so for context, um, after their last session, um, basically what they've been told is they, they had previously had level five characters. Uh, I told them to go ahead and bump their characters up to level 11 to, to sort of acknowledge this time passage. Uh, so they have much higher level characters than they did previously. Uh, and I also explained to them that it was going to be eight years having have passed since their last adventure. Um, but other than that, they know very little. They know they've been summoned back to the Feywild. Um, but unless there are some questions or concerns, I think we'll go ahead and jump right in. I will just note that the first 
time that we played these characters was the very first role of play, and it was pre-recorded. Yeah. And so this time we are live, uh, yeah. and and not pre-recorded. So that's be it's exciting. Super fun. <laughs> we'll see All how right. it goes. <laughs> Uh, so, it has been eight years since you ventured into the Feywild after a young girl named Alice. You completed three impossible tasks and confronted the Queen of Hearts. You each receive a missive from the Queen, her voice regal, with the slightest hint of desperation echoing from deep within your chest. She tells you, I need your help. Alice has gone missing through the looking glass, which drives fey creatures mad. Please, I need some outsiders to rescue her before something terrible happens. You each make your way to the little town and through the portals that are ever present in the forest. You pass through the Feywild and find a very different place than the one you left. Winter has fallen over this land. As you make your way through the garden, you are eventually welcomed to the castle and rush to speak with the Queen of Hearts. She explains that recently an enormous mirror appeared at the edge of the garden. She sent guards to inspect it, but any fey creature that looks into the mirror is driven insane. She suspects this is an attack on her kingdom, though she is unsure from who or where. Alice, who has become a warlock since you last saw her, insisted on entering the mirror to try to find out what or who was behind it and rid the kingdom of the mirror before it drives all of the inhabitants crazy. Not being a fey creature, Alice was able to enter the looking glass but she has not returned. As her patron, the Queen of Hearts, knows that she is still alive, but she has grown worried that something terrible has happened to her, and her kingdom reflects this growing concern. Hence the winter. Uh, she politely requests that the four of you venture into the looking glass and retrieve Alice, and if at all possible, learn the nature of the mirror and rid the kingdom of it. If you succeed, she promises you each a boon that is within her power to give. Agreeing to the queen's request, you make your way to the edge of the garden where a huge mirror, at least 300 feet wide and towering into the cloud, waits atop a hill. You see your reflections, but you are able to step forward, passing through the surface. On the other side, you find yourselves on a hill not unlike the one you left. This world is in the height of summer, and stretched out before you is a long valley leading to a castle in the distance. This land is a little strange though. You see forests, you see hills, clean pastures, but each change is marked by the fact that they occupy a perfect square. The hill that you are on is a square in and of itself, and the castle in the distance rests seven squares away. What do you do? What What is the designation of a square, like <coughs> size-wise? So, Distance in the Feywild is a little weird. Um, when you look at it, the castle seems to be about the same distance away from the mirror here as when you were on the other side of the mirror, the castle was. So towards the horizon, so if this was not the Feywild, you know, a few miles. Um, but of course, you're able to travel through the garden to get to the castle rather quickly, even though it seems very far away. Um, so the distance wise, your estimation would be maybe a mile uh, squared, but it's, it's hard to tell what, how, if that's actually how it would play out in travel time. Yeah, I, I, sorry, I, I meant to mean um, about what size does each square appear around us? Like, is it like a block, like a city block, or is it like... So, yeah, so the squares are, you mostly see them on the ground. And so as you look out across this valley, it looks like a checkerboard. Um, and each okay. square has clearly defined edges because the whatever is in that square starts and ends at the edges of that square. So if there's a forest, it cuts off abruptly at the edges of that square. And the pasture stops at the edges of that square. Okay, and does it seem like they're like a checkerboard that there's a, a commonality on the diagonals or anything like that? 
that you you don't see so much. There is some repeating, like you see multiple forests throughout there, but they're sort of spread out, and if you look at them, they seem a little random. They don't seem consistent the way you would expect, like a checkerboard to sort of be altering each each square that you went. What's over the edge of, of the your, side of the square? Of, yeah of the hill. Um, it's just the hill sort of generally slopes and there's just sort of a steep cutoff at the bottom and you enter into a pasture. This this cutoff is not that far like you could sort of jump down and be fine. Um, it's just sort of like there's a pretty strict delineation between this little hilly area that you're in uh, that has the mirror on top of it and when this pasture starts which is basically perfectly flat from that point forward with a lot of rolling grass. Is there, are there any animals around? Uh, not on top of the hill. Um, you, I guess if you looked around, you might see some birds in the sky in the distance. Um, so there's that. Uh, I'm going to send a message. I'm, I'm going to cast animal messenger real fast. Mm -hmm. And um, if I see a bird, I'll be like, hey, hey bird, come here, come here, come here, come here. Thank you, thank you bird. little bird flies down to you and is like, Hi, hey. Bird. Hey, 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 could you find a, uh, uh, sure, mushroom, mushroom. Oh. Hey, all right. <laughs> and just gobbles that up. Uh, like, could you I think that food was rotten. <coughs> uh, yeah, it's all rotten, but in a good way. Um, if you could find, if you could find this person, she has like blonde hair, brown hair. I forget her hair color, but I remembered sort of. And I'll just like kind of describe <laughs> Alice as I best remember her, and say, could you send her a message and say, hey, how how's it going? I hope you're okay. We're here to help you. Let me know. This is Arla. By the way, uh, let us know if <laughs> then then uh, that'll end, <laughs> and the bird just off. leaves. <laughs> bird bird gets bored and is like, yeah, yeah, I got it. <laughs> and you want to talk to um, this person? Starts flying away. And so it lo it's going to look for a creature matching the description I gave, um, yep. and it can cover about fifty miles per twenty four hours, oh. and duration is twenty four hours. Nice. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it, what that will come of that, but I thought I would do that. I was like, yeah. I just thought maybe, maybe since there's an animal, hopefully, hopefully we can maybe talk to her a little bit, huh? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good to me. Cool. Do you guys want to get going? Should we walk to the castle? I'm really Are there concerned. Any other buildings visible from here? Um. No, there are not any other. Let me double check and make sure that you wouldn't be able to see any other buildings. The answer is no. Uh, you, in the far distance, uh, you have to give me a perception check on that. Um, mm -hmm. If you, or since you're looking around specifically asked for it. That is an 11. 11. Uh, no, not the best. I don't see any buildings. <laughs> um, oh. oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, can I try to just do sending to try to send a message to Alice? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, where, where, where are you at? <laughs> uh, um, she says, "Let's see, well, twenty-five minutes." Like, dear Alice, are you on this strange plane of existence? And if so, where are you at? She says, she That's she responds, "I'm in the castle. I can't get out." Oh. All right. She's in the castle. Let's That's go. That's a little way. quicker than my bird. <laughs> Hopefully, she doesn't get annoyed with that. She's probably gonna get annoyed with that. Okay, let. If she survives the mushroom, well, let's go, let's go get Alice. <laughs> so y'all start heading, I assume, towards the castle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll jump down off yeah. this hill onto the. Do we need to climb down this thing? Uh, no, you don't. Like you walk down the hill. It's a gentle <laughs> sort of rolling hill. It's um. It's sort of like the one y'all originally came down when y'all saw the castle um, on the the first time y'all played. Can I do a nature um, check on the flat grass stuff? Like, can I see like what type of grass it is, or if it looks like magical in nature? Sure. All right, let's do that. What we got over here? That I'm wasn't great. That wasn't. Our... That wasn't 12. good. That's not great. You think it's it's wheat? Like, I mean, Ooh, that's okay. a low bar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not a mushroom, so I'm probably less interested. Cool. Uh, 
Benny, you feel confident that this is pretty standard wheat? <laughs> Classic standard wheat. wheat. I, I just want to make sure that we know that it's non-magical it's wheat. Non -magical. Normal wheat. Not gonna, I mean, non-magical in the die. sense that it's not anything cool about it. Uh, not non-magical <laughs> in the sense that it's in the Feywild and everything here is basically got at least some magic to it. So standard, mm -hmm. not shredded. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. The puns right, are starting already. Bronze cut uh, wheat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can I say hi to the wheat? Like, can I talk to it? Sure. Hi, hey. wheat. Hey. Um, do you know how to get to the uh, to the castle? It's that way. They just sort of lean <laughs> in the direction of the castle. <laughs> if we just there. start walking, will we get there? Yeah. Okay. All Thank right. you. Okay, so y'all y'all enter into this field and you walk a little way. You have a chat with the wheat. You've inspected it, I assume, before going into the wheat um, to see and make sure it's not, I guess, like murder, murder wheat. Yeah. Um, as, as you're entering in and walking through this, you all hear a loud voice sort of booming almost from the air around you. And it says, who are you? You are not supposed to be here. Uh, it is a female voice. How do we decide whether we're supposed to be here or not, voice? You are... You do not have a place here. We're, we're just here to pick up a friend. They, they, what, they weren't supposed to be here friend? either. Uh, her name is Alice. Her name is Alice. Yeah, Alice. You may not see Alice, the queen. Wait a moment. Who are you? You inquire I, so brazenly of us, but you do not say who you are. How do we know that you belong here? The voice says, I am the Red Queen, and I speak to pawns as I wish. <coughs> and she says, no pawns may meet the new White Queen. If you wish to meet the White Queen, you must reach the other end of the board and become royalty yourselves. Ooh, that sounds kind of fun. Oh. How would we go about doing that? go to the other end of the board. <laughs> oh, so just go, okay. <laughs> Wait, did we start at one end yeah. of the board? That that would be when you look back behind the mirror, none of y'all actually asked that, but I assume now you look back. Uh the world just sort of fades into like a weird cloud back there. Uh-oh. Yikes. We started from an end of the board, therefore we must be royalty already. Not pawns, as you presume. She says, you are in the place of a white pawn. <laughs> well, I don't even think that's actually true. <laughs> Benny's just muttering Wait, to is this, you if this is, the pawns. <laughs> if this is chess, aren't the pawns on the second, the second row of squares, usually? I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Clearly not the most logical. You, as you say that, <laughs> you realize the first square was the mirror. And y'all have entered into the wheat square. You are now on the second square of the board. Oh. Wow. We should have circled the square. <laughs> Circle takes square? Wait, oh. sorry. Um, wrong game, wrong game. I don't, I don't know how to play chess. <laughs> I don't think so we are, are playing chess. <laughs> I feel like we've got to be playing checkers. I don't know. I don't know enough of the rules to know. I know you can, like become you can stack in checkers can you become royalty in check chess i don't know chess yeah, well. a pawn. Yeah, pawn, pawn can become <laughs> pawn okay. becomes a, and um. benny would definitely know that i feel like you know arla might have played some uh chess with her mushroom friends with mushrooms those are the chess pieces those are the friends <laughs> yeah with, with yeah. mushrooms uh, are we uh are we able to Kind of how in the in the Fey Wild we like thought about where we wanted to go and walk forward. Um, should we try that to transport, or should we try to figure out some other way to continue to move forward from the wheat square? Yeah, I think we just need to think about the next square, maybe. Okay. And think about it and go. Unless Room has any other ideas, Room they're better at this sort of thing. Can I tell where the king and queen position would have been in the white spot? So um, if you were, so they do it reversed. 
So if you go straight forward, you would reach um, the castle. That is really, there's no giant chess pieces, so you're not 100% sure where they start, and the land is sort of spread out into the distance. Um, so it is a little difficult. You do think you're in towards the middle of the board, and you probably started in either the king or the queen's spot okay. with a mirror. So just straight ahead then. Do we want to continue being pawns? Or should we move in one of the directions that will make us something else? Uh, pawn is a good question. Uh, disembodied voice. Uh, we are white pawns, as you say, so therefore the white queen is our liege. Uh, are we not bid an audience? You hear no response. How rude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she likes us very much. So no, I don't like us either. <laughs> I, I think we're pretty. I think we're pretty good. I think we're pretty I cool. Think, I think we're awesome. I I say maybe we head towards the castle since she won't tell us how to become king or queen. Let's just get going. Yeah, let's go. Next square. Yeah, we should continue forward then. Um, hmm. Y'all start heading forward. I was trying to think. You got something you want to do before you start walking? I'm tempted. Can't, so I can't see in the distance what the, the, like, I'm assuming that Benny has, like, memorized a chessboard mm -hmm. so he knows where things would be. Um, can I see in the distance roughly where the, the edge of the far edge of the chessboard would be, like what those tiles would look like? Or is it just another, like, cloud is the other end? Yeah, the f like, far beyond the other, like, beyond the castle is, like, sort of cloudy. Right. And then along your edges, there is some land over there. Um, you, it's difficult to tell. I said you look, you feel like you're towards the center, but they're far enough, and you're, you know, you're small at this point compared to how size of this chessboard, whether or not you're on the right of center, left of center, in that vicinity. Um, so I think you know enough to know that you're probably in one of the center areas, like in the middle of the board going forward. But whether you were in the king or queen spot, you, I mean, you could roll, okay. I would say you could roll a perception check to try to figure it out. Mm, yeah, sure, why not? Survey says no. no. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, I guess I meant like, do I see what that spot looks like on the other edge, so I can where we can do the Feywild faux teleport, mm. where we just imagine ourselves being. In I mean, that directly. Spot. Uh, you then, mean well, the spot next in line or at the end? What, like down the end. Oh, that's the castle. Oh, the castle's at yes, the. Yes, the castle oh, okay. is directly ahead oh, okay. of you in this like line and is. Uh, in seven tiles away from where you started. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I think the consensus was move forward. All right. Y'all start walking. I assume you're thinking about a place you want to be. Where is the place that you're going to think about? The castle. castle. <laughs> okay. We're thinking about the castle. So as you walk, you're used to just sort of like time passing and all of a sudden you being where you thought. You find that every step here you are aware of and it takes the amount of time you assumed it would take to walk and you enter the next square. Huh. That that foe sort of teleporting that you were used to previously does not seem to be functioning the same way here. Um, the, the next square you enter um, has, um, it's sort of just like a little bit of a grassland. It's not wheat. It's just sort of um, regular grass, you know, maybe two or three inches high. Um, there's a little bit of um, bumpiness to it, and there's sort of some scrublands with brush and stuff. Um, as you are walking, I'm thinking about trying to get to the castle. Um, there is a moment where all of a sudden you find yourselves in a prison. Um, you are all of a sudden. Yep, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, grassland is one of my favorite terrains. Mm -hmm. So, I cannot be. Um, let's see, how does this read? 
can't become lost except by magical means. You remain alert to danger even when you are engaged in another activity. So I would expect that I should be able to anticipate a trap coming. So this isn't really a trap. I will say that you see it coming that really your surroundings are sort of fading um, and becoming solid as something else. Sort of being here in this place has trapped you. Um, and so I know I just used the word trap, which I said wouldn't. Um, <laughs> is, it isn't a trap, but it's not a trap in like you stepped on something and it sprung or okay. uh, something like that. Um, you are in a little prison. Um, it looks sort of like a prison you might run into in a large city um, back home. Um, there's a set of bars. There's little stone walls. Um, the grass is actually still in this place. Um, you don't recall it like falling on you or picking up like the walls like forming around you or something. There was just a moment where you were walking and you were in this grassland and then you were in a prison. And as you look out into this hallway, you don't see anyone else in this prison. But coming down the hallway, there appears to be a sheep. Um, he's standing upright. Uh, he has a little tie on. Uh, he walks down to your cell and says, um, uh, Hello, I am Harold Watanabe Esquire. Um, I will be um, representing you in your trial. Um, so, I guess we should talk a little bit about the crime you're going to commit. Uh, Indeed. What? Mm, what? The crime we're going to commit? Yes. Please explain. Well, you'll have a... You're in prison now. And you'll, you'll have a, a trial, you know, probably tomorrow, uh, for what? the crime that you'll commit, like, next week, maybe. What, what crime? I don't. I was. I wasn't gonna do a crime. I wasn't gonna do what? I don't. I'm confused. Mm, what? It's, it's a, well, you wouldn't be in prison if you weren't gonna do a crime. I See, time goes a little backwards here. So you're in prison now, <coughs> which means you got to have a trial, and then you'll commit a crime. I can't represent you if you don't know what crime you're gonna commit. That's. Mm. I uh. have no idea what crime we would commit in a week. We are here to rescue our friend Alice, and the queen told us not to. So kidnapping. Mm, he makes a little note on his sheet. See, no, no, it's not kidnapping. kidnapping. Rescuing. Not, not kid. That won't rescue. So not after the trial, we're free to go, right? Because we will not have been arrested yet. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I suppose. I suppose that's the case. I mean, there also have to be a time when you're you transfer to your trial too. I'm so yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. Wait, <laughs> seems confused. I just, for some reason, I just thought of <laughs> Harold Watanabe Esquire, attorney at Pa. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> so I do want to say you cat. can thank our, you can thank our producer <laughs> Kayla for coming up with that name. <laughs> it is an excellent Shabby. name. Shout outs. Well, Watanabe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, says, man. Sorry. Wait, so, yeah, I guess you, I guess you'd have to be. So, do you, wait, do you know what crime you're going to commit? No, absolutely not. Oh. Well, what crime are you going to commit? Well, I'm not in prison. I'm a lawyer. You're standing in the same prison that we are. Yeah, but you're on the other side of the bars. How do you know which side of the bars you're on? There's an exit over there. <laughs> I can I could leave. I'll misty step to the other side of the bars. It's like, oh hey. Uh yeah, okay. Escaping prison? Is that the crime you're gonna commit? I haven't escaped anything. I just decided I wanted to be on this side of the bars. Yeah. If the side the of the bars determines whether I'm in prison or not, and you say this side is not in prison, then I'm not in prison. Yeah, but you were in prison, and you, you got out. 
No one let you out. You just got out. So you escaped. Prison. I'll run right time down. works differently here. Yeah. And that the things that we will be doing are already done. Wait. Well, so I'm just going to write down escaping prison. And we'll work. I'll go. I'll get some documents about defending you from prison escape. And if y'all decide to change what crime you're going to commit, you can let me know. And we'll, I guess I'll start over. Try to only commit, try to only commit this crime, I guess. But we didn't commit that crime. What about the rest of us? None of us have committed any crimes. No crimes. No. So, okay. So, so you all committed different crimes? He's like writing notes. He's like, so you're, what's your name? The guy who escaped? Person who escaped? You? The one who, the one who came through the bars <laughs> their name is Thrum. Thrum. Right, sat down escaping from prison so do, do the rest of you know what Indeed. crimes you're going to commit uh, we were falsely accused to be put in prison for no reason yeah that's not uh, it was a corrupt system my cr- we would like to put the system on trial my uh-huh. crime that i'm going to commit is breaking into the castle okay that's all right, breaking into the castle. Finally, some answers that make sense as crimes. Uh, so if I change my mind on what crime I'm going to do, what do you want to know? Just which one? So I know I can't so I prepare a defense. The crime I that I'm going to do is killing you. Ooh, I don't like... <laughs> that seems rough. I don't like murder? Murdering their lawyer... <laughs> Thrun seems mean. Here, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Thrun uh, seems mean. <laughs> yes, I believe the crime we were committing was uh, yes, break, break. They're breaking into the castle. They're apparently murdering yourself. Very unfortunate. Um, uh, I believe the two of us. Uh, he he looks over at. Um, I want to say Arla. Yeah, Arla. Um, uh, we we. Uh, uh, broke into a different prison and removed that person and escaped uh, to a different dimension afterwards. I don't understand. Broke prison. So I I just, I want to go back to killing your lawyer as a bullet point here. Do you... Uh, It's very small. Don't even worry about it. Do you happen to have... Do you happen to have a time and date that you intended (laughs) to do that? Mm, well, I thought you said that it was sometime in the next week. Yeah, I mean, it could be longer than that. I mean, you don't have to rush to your crime if you don't, if you don't want to. Well, I need to see the evidence that I've committed it. Well, you, haven't, you haven't done it yet. Then we'll, we'll, then we'll talk about the evidence at the trial. That's, that's not until later. You're... Um, I'm gonna go, I think. No, I don't think you are. You didn't write down anything for me, because I didn't... I don't know. You... I'm gonna write down... You... Uh, Arla... Got in a fight with Thrum to protect her lawyer, who she <laughs> likes a lot. <laughs> 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 oh, I... I says, <laughs> sweet think leniency would be important <laughs> in this <laughs> in this case i guess i'll take leniency so sure uh, <laughs> um benny's definitely picking up what um lydia was putting down and it's uh no 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 we were all here um uh capturing the white queen and taking her to the fey wild that's that was our crime we captured the white queen oh. and, and took her to the fey okay wild. all right capturing white queen taking her to the fey wild okay so yep. kidnapping that was are we back at kidnapping yes sort sort okay. of yeah it was more of like a um some sort of i don't know over so he's got like a racer I'm out sweet. he's on erasing where he'd marked out kidnapping through through may or may not have um, killed a lawyer as a casualty of the incident. Oh. Well, you you can fill in the name though. Okay. I'm just writing 
someone else. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like Hans Watanabe, his, his uh, <laughs> um, like complete nemesis in the court. Right. I'm still, I would still like to break into the castle, please, for my crime. Okay, uh, breaking and Maybe. entering and kidnapping charges. I, I got it. Okay, I will. That's us. I'm gonna go. Pre- I'm gonna go prepare this case right away. And he, he like looks it through him and is Do like, "Do a good gotta, job. Uh, I'm gonna go." Uh, <laughs> heads towards the exit. Watch your back. No. <laughs> <laughs> <Hurries> up. <laughs> you just hear him like muttering to himself. So there's a, there's a bad people. <laughs> he didn't seem so bad. He probably. I feel like there's not so bad. No. Mm. I liked him. I think he'll do a good job at our trial. So I'm trying not to kill the, to the lawyer. I have no intention of doing so. Are we actually stuck in a cage, or can we just like open the door? Or is there? There a is door? a door, and it is locked. Thrum is on the other side and could easily <laughs> open it at this point. Yeah. I, I, oh, okay. <laughs> <please do that. laughs> okay. Thank That's you. That's a good one. Thank you. <laughs> um, can we just go the way that the lawyer went? Yeah, you walk out. Yeah, we'll just stalk the lawyer. You walk out the door, and as you do, the the prison behind you just actually sort of vanishes, uh, as if it was never there, and you're you're back in this grassy field. Okay, cool. So when's our when's, when's our trial? <laughs> I don't know if that's ever actually. I have a feeling thing. it'll happen on one of the other squares. That's true. That's fair. I want to try something. Okay. Um, if I fly over a square, do, do I still, does the, the, the stuff still change? Um, like I, if I cast fly on all of us and then try to fly over a square. Um, so you're just flying to the next square. Is that your goal? How long does fly last? Yeah. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Uh, so you start flying, um, going in that direction. You fly over, uh, the rest of this square um, around the time that your fly spell is starting to run out, um, you are over the next square. Um, the next square is sort of a lightly wooded area. And uh-huh. um, sort of you see in the distance a uh, rather large wall uh, right around the time that your fly spell is running out. Um, and so you land, lest you fall, or do something else. Um, and there's a little jaunt but this wall is probably 40 feet high um it appears to be made of a thick brick um yeah i guess that's where we'll stop uh for description wise at this point so did we land on the side of the wall that was like towards the castle or like with the wall in front of us with the wall in front of you oh that's no good hello wall you hear, a, you hear a voice in your head say, don't talk to my wall. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Is this your wall? Yeah, it's my wall. Uh, where are you? When did you build it? I'm up here. I'm sitting on the wall. Can we look you up? look up and <laughs> there is a uh, way in the distance. There is a, a little stumpy creature with some tentacles coming out the bottom of it. Um... It is basically a big floating ball. It has a a nice big smile on its face. And you realize that it's communicating with you telepathically. Hmm. Um, Is there any way we can get around your wall, sir? Mm, Person? No, my wall is quite impressive. I I don't think that's acceptable. Uh, What's your name? What's your name? Flumpty Dumpty. (laughs) Flumpty, uh, flumpty, <laughs> flumpty, dumpty. I rolled an arcana check to identify it as a known ma- magical monster. Yes, it's a flump. <laughs> flump. It's a flump. A flump. So it's flump. I, hold on. Could you could you spell flump? <laughs> F L U M P H T. Flump. I think no, without the T. Flump. But he has a T Y because he's flumpty. A flump. <laughs> That one hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to call you FD. What's going on, FD? Um, hey, don't change my name. Uh, I come from a trouble. long line of dumpties. 
Uh, can I call you an honorific with Dumpty then? Wait, wait, wait. Mr. Dumpty, be okay? <laughs> Not Mr. It's got to be better than that. Uh, King? S- sir? Mm, I don't want to get in any trouble by going with King. Lord, That's Lord fine. Dumpty? Sure, Lord Dumpty. Lord Dumpty. Great. May we pass your wall? No. No, I'm afraid not. Uh, why, why not? Because if you pass my wall, then people are just going to start passing around rumors that my wall is just easily passed, and I don't really like the idea of people not taking my wall seriously. Is your wall easily passed? No, it's very high. It's, I mean, you are way down there. What if what, we could always like try and fly over the wall, though, right? Well, I mean, no. I don't want you mm-hmm. passing my wall. How How long is the wall? So, as you stand here on this square, you realize when you look left and right, you don't see an end to it. Um, Which doesn't make sense because you know that the squares sort of end and have very definitive perimeters. Yeah. Okay, Arla's going to turn into a giant owl. Mm -hmm. And just, like, get up and, like, be up next to Lord Dumpty. So as you start flying up, uh, he points one of his little tentacles at you, and he goes, No! And (laughs) he says, Stonefall! And you have a spell that's cast on you. (laughs) That is the opposite of Featherfall, (laughs) where you fall hard. (laughs) He says, I said no, you can't cross my wall. Uh, (laughs) Is actually what I say. (laughs) 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 Is there something we can do to appease you to gain passage? Hmm. Hmm. We're excellent tea shifts. Ah. Brewers. There we go. I don't know. That's a word. I'm really here trying to maintain the the flumpty dumpty brand of walls so I don't know that I can let you pass I just need y'all to stay over here so could you just stay over here on this side of the wall hmm what's on the other side of the wall Where is the castle on this side or that side he looks behind and uh, the castle's back there uh, yeah <laughs> uh, no these both take minutes I can't do them instantaneously <laughs> I mean, I could I'll do the same thing <laughs> again and just be on the other side of the wall. How thick was the wall yeah. when we were able to see uh, it from above? It's probably like a foot thick, but you do have to be able to see your destination with Misty Step. You do? I mean, I have other options too, but... Yeah. Let me see. What's the wall made out of? Ethereal-ness. It seems to be like a thick brick, almost like cinder blocks. If I try to do stone shape, does it affect the wall? <coughs> Uh, what are you doing with your mold? Subject? Mold earth. Can I like mold a hole in it? Uh, you can, and he. Um, as soon as you go to cast that spell, he goes counter spell. Stop messing with my wall. <laughs> can we? What if we? Are we? I'm oh, sorry. I was just gonna say, what if we made a great story about how hard it is to get across your wall? Oh yeah. And told everybody this great story. Could your story include that you cheated and that you didn't really get by the wall, that you cheated somehow, and that you're, because you couldn't get past the wall? Yeah, that's fine by, yeah, as long as the story is cheating, yeah, that's fine. I'm no longer an owl, by the way, to be able to say these things. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's better if you are an owl. You're just like, Ooh. Well, he would understand me, like, through my brain, but no one else so, would understand oh, yeah. what I'm well, saying. Also, so in this place, when you shapeshift, you can still talk. Oh, okay. That's fine. Then I'll still be an owl. I'll still be an owl person. <laughs> oh, yeah. How, do, how did we cheat to get around your wall in this story? Well, yeah, what's your you favorite cheat you were going to cheat to get around the wall. I... Y'all are making up the story. I'm perfectly happy with y'all staying sure, on sure. this side of the wall. If we cheat and it's too simple of a cheat for your liking, though. Well, pitch me something. Let's have okay. a brainstorming session. Um, what if All right, we, let's brainstorm. We, let's brainstorm. We, we burrowed under the wall. That's a good one. I could do that easy. Hmm. The wall's pretty deep into the ground. You'd have to dig real deep. How deep? 
forever? I don't know. Oh, that's a I long, used, that's, uh, that's a long I used, way. I use special enchantments to turn a section of your wall into a hole for so many meters for so long nah. while you were looking at that's somewhere else. That's too easy. Then I sound incompetent because I was looking what somewhere we, else. What if we go to the next square and then move forward and then move back? Well, then you didn't really pass my wall. You went somewhere else. What if should can we do that? Do you guys want to do that? <laughs> we could. Is, is that something we can do? Oh yeah, <laughs> it only exists in the square. <laughs> hey guys, wait, but aren't y'all pawns? Yeah, we can only move forward. Pawns can only move forward. Oh. That's silly. Y'all can't do that. Dang it! Oh, I'm upset. What if uh what if oh. we made what if we said we knocked you off the wall? Oh, don't knock me off the wall. But that's that's the that's the that's the t no story. One would, no one would believe that. Haven't you ever heard of well, I don't know. If that's Is he <laughs> straight in front of us or is he off to one side? I mean, he's up like real right high, up. right? Yeah. It's 40 feet oh. up in the air. So, <laughs> this might be silly. While you guys are talking, uh, I'll sit down for a minute and start drawing out the shape of a horse in the grass um, and start <laughs> doing the ritual spell for Phantom Steed. <laughs> and if, if nothing other than brainstorming happens for ten minutes, he's going to have a Phantom Steed and then jump on it and be like, I'm a knight! <laughs> <laughs> right. That, okay... That actually gives me an idea. Does anyone does anyone have a marker or pen with them? I'm sure I do for cataloging That's mushrooms. Um, I can so ha hand that to you if you ask. Yeah, so I borrow a pen or a marker from Arla, and I just draw a big door on the wall with like a handle. Hey, don't draw on my wall. Okay, I'm I'm so <laughs> sorry. It was worth a shot. Did it work? No. They make a door. Darn <laughs> it. <laughs> it was a nice thought. He's like, my walls are draw proof. That's, you, that's pretty low tier. I would be I wouldn't be top of the line walls if people could just draw doors in them. Let's be if honest. If you imagine a door, does that work? Uh, like if you try like if Arla sits there and imagines a door. Uh it still doesn't open up. <laughs> He's like, What are you thinking about? Do I have Stop thinking about ways? Can past I move past his wall now? Huh? Can I move past his door by changing myself uh, instantaneously into a knight? You just look like you're on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> if you were a knight, we'd know. Well, now we have the king's horses and the king's men. Oh, wow. Oh, no. This is a good line of thought. <laughs> what, did, oh. what did you... I have a sword. I mean, come on. I have a bow and arrows, but I'm trying to see if we can solve this without violence. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. I'm still riding this this knight idea. I can minor illusion like a helm or something. I'll, I mean, we we need to cheat, but how will we cheat? Yeah. What Cheating are, changed ourselves you... from pawns to something we weren't supposed to be able to change ourselves to. That's cheating. Wait, that's true. <laughs> now we can. <laughs> but how do we? What's a what's a chess piece that can go that way? A, a bishop, a bishop, a, a bishop would be able to, or or a knight would be able to. Uh, yeah, any other none piece. Of us are other than the king. Are y'all talking about this out loud? He's like the only thing a pawn can becomes a queen, and you got to get to the end of the board. Uh, well, a pawn can become technically a, started in the king spot. They can so. also become a, anyway. Uh, I had. Well, yeah, and we we did start by. Move, we've only moved one square at a time, so clearly we're a king. Mm. If we'd been a pawn, we would have moved two squares at the very beginning. That's mm. true. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> seem, like, seem like you're pawns. I'm pretty what? sure I heard a loud voice in the sky say, look at these pawns. <laughs> <laughs> um, so loud what voice a, designation. What are the rules of the wall? Does the wall have rules? What are the rules? Don't pass it. You don't pass Aww. the wall. Also, talk about the wall and how good it is as a wall. Whenever you turn around because you can't pass it and you inevitably meet people from the direction you came, tell them about how great this wall was. Mm. Well, thus far, the only people we know of are actually in the castle. So. This wall is not that good at all. 
I could walk right I got through it. it if I wanted to. I'd like to see you try. I'll use etherealness <laughs> and shift to the ethereal plane and walk through the wall. So you find that there is no ethereal plane here, and oh. the spell fails. <laughs> wow. Okay. This is a wow. yeah. This is a strange place. <laughs> no. Oh no. Um. I don't know. <laughs> is there any animals around? So any animals around? Uh, yeah, at this point, y'all pass by birds and other, like, groundling, woodling animals and stuff. Can I find a bird real fast? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, you calling cast one with a spell. Yeah, I'll, I'll cast Speak with Animals. Um, one and I'll say, hey, hey, bird, yeah. uh, have you seen other people go across this wall? Like, go over it. Sometimes. How do they do it? What do they do? What does it look like? Um, usually they knock them off the wall. <laughs> Oh, okay. That seems so. It seems kind of mean. He's kind of mean. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, who wants to? Who wants to do the honors? Oh, I don't want to. Okay. He says, "What are you talking with about that bird? With <laughs> are those, you conspiring with birds against me now?" <laughs> um. She's definitely telling the bird how great your wall oh, is. Oh, good. Yeah. These stupid birds and their ability to fly over my wall. Um, can I just, like, pick up a rock and throw it at him? Yes, you can. Okay. And <laughs> he, like, he, like, tries to dodge it as you throw it. Uh, and he's, he, like, fakes his balance. I'll realize for a moment, like, this, this thing can float. But it, like, it's like, oh, no. And it just starts falling. And it's falling the <laughs> slowest fall you've ever seen. And it's hamming it up the whole way down. It's like, oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, no. Uh, uh. And then it just sort of gently, almost like a napkin, like, going back and forth. It's, like, falling off a table. Just sort of, like, lands. And it's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, eh. You, ah, uh, broken. Ah. Uh. So oh, sorry, cool Lord. People. It's like a Dumpty. soccer player. Like. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's like, oh, broke, uh, oh, broken. Oh, oh, it hurts so much. Uh, I druid craft a little, like, a little uh, petal bandage. Well, I believe it. <laughs> 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 I druid craft, like, a little, uh, like, bandage made out of flower-ness, like, flower petals, and actually... Mu- I smack that out of your hand and say, no! <laughs> He was mean. I drew a craft <laughs> another one made out of mushrooms and like place it, like just give it to him, like ha- put it on top of him, even <laughs> though there's no <laughs> obvious like p- parts of hurt. You ki- you killed me. Oh, you killed me. Oh, you're so mean. You're so much mean people. You killed me so much. <sighs> does the camera tracking work on stream? <laughs> yes, it yeah. does. Yes, it's so. Funny. Everybody <laughs> sees. Gets real. Because you like went out. You you it like zoomed in and then went out of the storage when you're like I'm dead. <laughs> just as a heads up for everybody out there, so uh, Jonathan is using a new camera that like zooms and follows his face real fun, and so that's why we're all laughing about yeah. it. Real fun, uh, <laughs> real dramatic, <laughs> extra, <laughs> yeah, dramatic Does extra. That mean we can go past the wall now. Yep. Are you yes. talking to the flump? Yeah, He's let's like, go. You, you no, we're you going. Let's just go. go. Let's just go. We cheated because we killed the wall keeper. You're so mean. Uh, so y'all, how are y'all getting? Just walking. Can I mold yeah. earth? It's only a foot. Wa- a leg. Can I yeah. mold earth and just like split it? Like. Yep. Yeah. Just I open think I it up. Do that. Walk on through. <laughs> you get on, you get through. Within a five foot cube, so that should be big enough for everyone. Uh, through through might yeah. have to crouch a little bit. <laughs> I will have to compress just a bit to get through that. But yeah. We can just do it twice over the course of six seconds. Um, yeah. yeah. Cool. And we, I guess we're on to the next square. Yeah. Square so y'all time. Walk. Me and my phantom horse come with me. Okay. You got your phantom horse. I assume you're riding on. What did you, what, what's the name of your phantom horse, Benny? Watson. Oh. Hi, Watson. Oh, wait, no, that's my ferret's <laughs> name. <laughs> that's I have right. forgot about my ferret. Hey, ferret. My ferret's name was Watson. Yeah. He's got a little hat too, like a little. Oh. I don't know what the mo- ghastly. That's my ghost horse. Hi, ghastly. All right, let's go. So All right, next square. Y'all, I want to test a theory though. Let's take a right. Uh, oh, I so don't want to break rules. I don't want to break rules. I don't want to break rules. I don't want to break rules. So you're gonna t- you're gonna take a right. 
We're going to test the theory and see I think if we can go to a Arla will watch right left. Benny do this. Just kind of chilling at the he's edge. He's going to test his, his, his I'm now a knight theory as well. Okay. So you, you I will also stay if I'm not a knight. <laughs> what about you, you Thurm? I'll go with. Okay. See what happens. So the two, the t- yeah, we need a control. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you turn right and start walking. Um, you walk for a while. Um, the scenery is not really changing any. You're still in this uh, sort of low grass field. Uh, you eventually find yourselves back at the front of the wall. Uh, Frumpty Dumpty, Flumpty Dumpty is laying, still laying on the ground. Like, oh, it's the people who killed me. They came back. Oh, they're so mean. They're so terrible. <laughs> and there's still a big open <laughs> hole in the wall where y'all had walked through previously. So walking to the right brought us back from the start. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. I go through on Ghastly. And go. Nope. Not a I knife. See, but he's mean. He's got a horse now, and he's not even trying to fix me. <laughs> um, cool. So, are we are we in the next square? I yeah, guess we so move forward. Y'all travel in the next square. The next square is is very like desolate. Um, and as you walk into it, all of a sudden you realize you're in what looks to be a market. This wasn't anywhere to see when you sort of entered the square. Um, the market appears to be empty, but directly ahead of you standing in the path, there is a knight wearing blood red armor. Uh, he has a full set of plate mail and a very large shield, uh, a long sword by his side, and has um, a, a full shielded helmet on. And he says... How dare you pawns enter my space? We will duel. And y'all need to roll initiative. No. Okay. <laughs> well, if we entered your space, it was from a diagonal, so that means you lost. Uh, no, no. <laughs> he does not seem to care <laughs> for, your, for your logic. This makes no sense. <laughs> Side note, Retcon, I, l- I probably had to do stone shape rather than mold earth for that, that thing. But yeah, mm. it still happened. Um... I, since I have D&D Beyond on split screen, where is initiative? It's, it should be. Oh, it's I see it. It's at the top. top. Yeah. Okay. I, I rolled a four, or I rolled a nine and I got a 14. It looks like Yes, we please try through. to, try to say what you rolled and what your bonus puts you out to. Yeah. Okay. I rolled a 19 and got plus two, so I'm at 21. Fifteen plus one. Sixteen. Uh, between y'all's decks, who's It higher? doesn't show. Oh, mine's just a one. His is definitely okay. higher. Yeah, if you just click on him, it shows you that. That's a lot of decks. Um. Mm-hmm. Is there a question? Yeah, uh... Room, I think we lost you on the stream. Start, stop recording. All right, Thrun's gonna jump back in here. Meanwhile, it's Arlo's turn. I'm gonna cast Blight. Mm. That's a, a DC 16 con save. DC 16 con save. And then we got. Oh my some gosh. Stuff over here. Uh, uh, he made it. I saw. It's not great. Well, he still takes forty-eight damage. Um, wait. Oh, let me make sure that there's there's a few things. Uh, is he a construct? He is not a construct. Okay, it would have no effect if he's a construct. So let me um, roll forty-eight. Let me see. Or let me see. I'll just tab. We'll do the eight d eight and then half. Is that is that's what's supposed to do? Come come here. Stop doing that spell thing. I don't want I don't want you that. Go away. Do this other thing. This is the thing you want to do. Boom. Take it. What do we got? So half of that. And half of that. So you rolled thirty six. So it's going to yeah. be eighteen. Eighteen points of damage. All right. Uh, is that the end of your turn? I he doesn't seem to like being blighted, but that is a thing. Yeah. Um, let me make sure I don't have anything else. I think that's it. That'll be it. 
So you're you cast this spell and you see his his armor clench up for a moment as like rust comes across some of this pristine metal. Uh, it's it's very nice um, armor and it's quite shiny. Uh, it's very well wrought, um, but you've you've sort of ruined it, especially around the edges. And he's clenching as though there's a bit of pain, but he holds steady. Oh wait, I can do <coughs> one other thing. I can do a bonus attack um, with my magic stone. Magic stone. I think. Magic stone. Um. <laughs> magic stone. Because it's a bonus That's action. Um, so I have some like pebbles in my pocket. They're carved to look like little mushrooms, by the way. Um, I imbue them with magic and, um, I can throw one at him with a sling, um, okay. which I have a uh, plus eight to hit. So that's going to be a, I, did that show up? Um, 24. Yeah. That's a 24 to hit. I rolled a 16 plus eight. Does that right, hit? That hits. That does hit. All right. We're going to do this damage. Do, do, do. Not bad, not bad at all. Nine more damage. Nice. You strike. Uh, your your shot hits true. Smacks right into the side of his helmet, and there's a there's a bit of a recoil <laughs> as the camera bounces back and forth on the <laughs> <Yes>. face. <laughs> um, as he gets hit, it's it just playing up the drama of of this shot that you threw. Um, but yes, you seem to have hit true with this stone that. Um, puts a dent in his uh, nice fine helmet yeah. uh, Throom Emissary Throom I believe is your, your full title yes Emissary now instead of Wayfinder like before mm-hmm. um, got a promotion <laughs> a change or just of role a change at of least <laughs> um, just which exciting. altered the overtones in my name so changed my honorific uh, anyway I'm gonna attack <laughs> alright um <laughs> I think I know how that works. I do have a thing called distant strike. When I take the attack action, I can teleport up to 10 feet before each attack to an unoccupied space and attack at least two different creatures, but I guess there's only one guy we're fighting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I have two attacks per action. Mm-hmm. So I will start with my great club. And that is a natural 20 plus 4. So <gasps> nice. it's 24 to hit. So you teleport in and immediately <laughs> smash him across the face with your club. Yep. This is the one in my hands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so two-handed okay. great club in my hands. Uh, total of 6 damage, though, <laughs> with my natural 20 there. Oh, Does no. That <laughs> is it your plus 3, your strength? Did you roll the extra D6? I rolled... I don't know. I clicked on the damage two, button next to D8. Great Club. Do okay. I need to... It's 2D8. It looks like it's 3 plus 3. Do you have a damage bonus, like, from your strength? Uh, no. Oh, okay. So that's fine. <laughs> All right. You smash into his head with this club and then rear back for another hit. Yep. And this will be with my club in my trunk. And that is a 17 total to hit. 13 plus 4. Seven, 17 does not hit. Uh, missed him with my trunk. Mm. But that was... Is your trunk your offhand, though, right? That's your bonus action to swing? You should still um, have another... Oh, yeah. I guess primary. that would be. So Yeah, you still have like a primary attack with your main club. I don't know how melee combat works in D&D. Yep. Sorry. I gotcha. I've played, a, I've played <laughs> some fighters in my day. <laughs> well, in the, I'm not a fighter. I'm a ranger. Yeah. I just get I get two attacks per action. So I assumed the first one was with the one and the second one was with the other. Yeah. If you want me to attack again, I will. Yeah. Yeah. You get another attack. You get okay. two main hand attacks. <laughs> And then if you are a ranger, you can usually take an offhanded attack as a bonus action. Uh, three plus seven does not hit. Yeah, no, that that did not hit. I did not do good there. No. Um, all right. We will... Is there anything else you're going to do on your turn? Um, so I guess that's been my action and my bonus action, and I'm not going to move out of melee so no um all right so uh next is benny 
Uh, I don't have much I can do, so I will try to swing at him with a cane. But I'm not sure how you do that on roll or on this. Uh, it should be, be under actions. If you have the cane equipped, it should be under attack, probably. Right. Well, I get all these bonuses from Blade Song, but I'm not sure how I how I get to get it to apply. <laughs> I mean, if you just know what the total bonus is, you can always just roll and add it. Uh, yeah, we'll just do the normal thing. Nope. And nope. Probably. Uh, nine does not hit, and nine does. <laughs> nine and a nine. Nope. <laughs> so. Those. So I try to punk him on the head twice, and then. Uh, <laughs> Failed he, to do so. He's able to take his shield up and parry your attacks uh, as you swing forward. Uh, Lydia. Um. Okay. So, I. How? So. Okay. It says I have three attacks per action. Um. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna use my long sword. Um. Mm -hmm. And so do I. Uh. Click the. Um. The hit. Yep. One and roll that. Okay. Um. I rolled a 16, so uh, which is plus 6, so 22 um, yep, to that, hit. That hits, so you can roll your damage. Okay. You charge uh, forward with your sword. Um, this knight has parried these attacks from Benny. Uh, you s swing through uh, and are able to slash into a weak spot in their armor of this knight for 5 damage. Yeah. Um... Okay, and then um, I will. Can I just can I do that again? Yeah, you can do it two okay, more times. Cool. Awesome. Ooh, I rolled an eighteen and got a plus six, which is twenty-four. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming that hits. That so hits then, again. Uh, damage is seven. So you have um, flurry of attacks are swinging uh, aggressively, pushing the knight back with this these sword uh, uh, slashes to his armor and these gaps uh, between his shield and his sword as he tries to parry you. Um, okay, and then I will do one more, if that's yep. okay, just long sword again. Okay. That one's not very good. No. <laughs> I don't think that hits. No, that one, you, you are you're driving this momentum and uh, seemingly as a reaction to this, he draws up his shield in front of you and your your uh, sword hits it flatly um, as he pushes forward and, and starts his own attack um, coming back, uh, ready to hit. Um, all right. So are we needing to go on break? Is that the yeah, why don't we go on a quick break? Um, yeah. Okay. Sure. We will we will leave it there. It is the the Red Knight's turn, uh, and we will we will jump to a break and a little bit of uh, some information about what the libraries is doing. So please join us again. Um, we're gonna grab some some snacks, drinks, maybe. Uh, we'll be right back. Thank you. Yay! Thanks. Yay!
experience? Come to Media Design Studio A and check out one of our virtual reality headsets. The Oculus Quest and Oculus Go are both standalone headsets, which means they're easy to set up and transport, so you can play in the comforts of your own home. The Oculus Go is a headset that allows users to experience incredible interactive scenes and videos in stunning virtual reality. The remote allows you to explore robust virtual reality landscapes. And if you're looking for something a little bit more interactive, you can try out the Oculus Quest. It comes with two controllers, which allow for movement and exploration within virtual games and worlds. You can go to bookings.lib.vt.edu to check out all of the virtual reality headsets we have to offer and to book your very own virtual reality experience. Looking to try your hands at a new skill or learn something new? Check out all of the events that Virginia Tech's library has to offer. If you've published a scholarly article, why not learn how to share your work online in promoting your scholarly work online? Or if video editing is more your thing, check out special effects for video projects with Camtasia to learn all about the video editing app Camtasia that we offer through the Media Design Studios. Making games in VR teaches you the basics of VR Unity development and lets you learn the building blocks to make your very own virtual reality game. Learn how to use the tools from NightLab in incorporating media into digital scholarship with NightLab tools, or learn how to use the free and easy-to-use citation manager Mendeley with Getting Started with Mendeley. Go to calendar.lib.vt.edu to check out all of the events that the library has to offer. We hope to see you at one soon! Hello everyone, welcome back to the role play. Uh, so as a heads up, Max had to run, he had a last uh, sort of 
quick thing pop up uh, that was very important. Uh, and so he's he's going to be gone for the rest of the stream, but we are going to soldier on. Um, and uh, his character, Benny, will just sort of be floating and maybe contributing some thoughts or ideas as we go. Um, and well, I'll sort of steer him in that direction. But yes, when we, when we left before the break, the characters were in the midst of a fight with the Red Knight, uh, who was standing before them, blocking their path as they try to progress forward towards the castle that they... Uh, have come to understand that Alice um, is being held in. She says she cannot escape, um, and they are trying to rescue her. So it was the Red Knight's turn, um, and he's just been hit by Lydia and Thrum as they charge forward with their various weapons, uh, and he is going to strike back. Um, does a 25 hit you, Thrum? Roll a 14 plus 11. I would say so. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then we got some damage. Not that one. He strikes you for um, 15 points of slashing damage, and then you additionally Ouch. take... Uh, looks like a total of 14 points of psychic damage as this Ouch. blade cuts into you. Um, and he's going to take another swing. Uh, does a 17 hit? Yes. 17 mm -hmm. hits. Uh, then his sword swings by, cuts into your trunk for 10 points of slashing. Ow. Yeah. And some psychic damage. Uh, that looks like 21 points of psychic damage. He is very effective. Uh, Drew, he what's turns your hit points at? <laughs> uh, less than they were. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 53. Uh, oh. like <laughs> um, and then... Um, Lydia, he turns with his sword to swing at you and uh, actually fumbles, rolled a nat one, uh, and misses you uh, with the, the, the broad side of his sword. Um, caught off guard by these um, uh, ferocious attacks that you threw forward first, um, but is <coughs> unable to land purchase uh, with this second round of attacks, which means we're back around to Arla. Uh, I'm going to cast, we're going to cast, let me see here, Cure Wounds at third level <laughs> on Thrum. Uh, no, I don't want to right click that. Cure Wounds. It's a solid 13 points of cure. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I think that's all I can do. Let me see if there's anything else I can do. Um, let's see. <laughs> oh, actually, I could probably also, uh, just at a, just at a, f no, I'm going to save that. Saving that. Uh, can I bonus action hide? <laughs> There's nothing to hide behind, is there? <laughs> that, not really. Uh, <laughs> you can make an attempt. Uh, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I got a natural 20 <laughs> plus two. <laughs> I am really small. Really what if small. I like, are they on a horse? Uh, he is not on the horse right now. Oh, never mind. Um, you, uh, <laughs> I like to imagine that you ducked down and like turned around and you just look like a big mushroom now. <laughs> and that like makes sense here. So it's like, is that a, was that mushroom there the whole time? Did that, did that, <laughs> No go hide behind that musher that was there. Because I imagine you probably also have like a big mushroom sticking yeah, out of like your backpack. I have a big stuff. backpack and I have like a lot of mushrooms. I probably have like a mushroom cloth thing. Like a, um, what's in the cloth? Like you just lay down like and you look like a mushroom log. It's like a mushroom ghillie suit. You know, it's just like a big, <laughs> right? a big mushroom. Yeah, I think a mushroom covered log would be more, more likely. Nice. Through you are up. Well, I'm... 
not exactly happy to have been attacked so viciously. Um, I'm gonna attack. <laughs> All right. Uh, it seems like the thing to do. Um, so, great club. 17 to hit, which I does think you said doesn't. Hit. Does not hit. And He's very well armored. Second, 19 to hit? 19 does not hit. Uh, you strike into his shield. Uh, you, are, you swing your club. It looks like it's headed right towards his face. Uh, and at the last minute, he's able to get his, his shield up in front of him. Uh, yeah. You I should don't... have one more attack. Well, you okay. said that was a bonus action to do the th yeah, third. Yeah, if, if that's what... Yeah, if you're going to use your bonus action for it. I'm going to... If I misty step away, does he get an attack of opportunity? He does not. Yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to, to cast misty step and move away from him. All right. How far away are you going? Uh, well, it'll let me go 30 feet, so I'm I will happily feet. go that far. <laughs> All right. So you travel 30 feet away. Um, it is now Benny's turn. And um, I'll make some rolls to see if Benny does some damage over here and just see how that goes. Not with that one. Uh, yes, probably with that one. All right. Benny strikes forward with his cane, uh, and which is actually a sword. Uh, and slices into this uh, knight, sort of jabbing him like right in the crux of where his arm shoulder meets the armor, and there's a, a little bit of unprotected patch there. But it is now Lydia's turn. Um. Okay. So, question: What is the difference between like traditional damage and or slashing damage and bludgeoning damage? So, um bludgeoning would usually be like a club or a hammer so it's the sort of damage you take from hitting a large surface very hard slashing damage is usually something that's going to cut into you with a blade um, there's also piercing damage which is when something sharp and pointy like goes through your skin for the most part those three types of damage don't have a lot of effect but they can certain creatures like skeletons are vulnerable to bludgeoning damage because they're just skeletons so like if you're doing that type of damage it's really effective against them um, okay mm -hmm. okay um i'm just gonna stick with the long sword because that's my only attack that's like good <laughs> um so i'm gonna do that uh i rolled a 16 plus 6 which gives me 22 that hits um and then for damage i rolled an 8 plus 2 which is 10 um, and then 18 plus 6, uh, you, you 24. Are, you're killing it right now with these rolls. <laughs> I, yeah. Good uh, rolls, good rolls, good rolls. That's what we need. <laughs> yeah, keep rolls, it up. Two, six damage. Counteract my and bad we'll rolls. One more. Not as good. Five plus six, eleven. Yeah, I always, that always miss oh, out on that last good, one. Not as good. Yeah, but you know what? That's okay. Yeah, you, you charge forward. He, uh, is caught off guard from these flurry of blows and this quick movement that you have. Um, you hit hard against his helmet and knock his shield back and are able to land a solid blow on his chest uh, with your long sword dealing this damage. Um, he does appear to be bloodied at this point. Uh, he seems to have suffered a, a great amount of damage. Um, also for um, Danny, bloodied is a term in D&D &D for when a creature is sort of lost half their hit points and it's supposed to represent the physical like you could see that this creature has taken a significant amount of damage and are hurt pretty badly um, okay cool so you see like blood coming from sort of some of the the creeks and um, his armor and stuff and, and see some uh pretty grievous wounds but it is his turn um and he actually turns his sword up and slams it into the ground and i need everyone within 30 feet of him uh to yeah. give me a <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, let me make sure what kind of saving throw this is. I had hit sure. so well. I was so hidden. <laughs> you you are hidden so well. Constitution <laughs> saving throw. So I jumped 30 feet away. Does that mean I'm within or outside of 30 feet? Mm, 30 feet from him. He's the center point of it. I'm going to say you're just outside of it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Wait, so what are what are we rolling? Constitution saving throws. Okay. I got a natural 20. <laughs> Plus two. Everybody's rolling well, but three. <laughs> I mean, this is how I always play. Like, everybody rolls well but me. <laughs> this is this is an established fact. Wait, is there... Do I just do constitution or is there a specific place for saving throw? Uh, I think when you click on it... Um, there's under saving throws. There's like a little box underneath um, yeah. to the left there. You can just click on the constitution one. Yeah, click on your modifier for constitution saving throws. Like it's the saving throw box. It has yeah, everything so in it. It's like underneath. Wait, where's, where's, um, where's the saving throw box? Oh, let me see. You're you're at half screen, right? Oh, 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 I see it. I see yeah. it. I see it. Yeah, there you go. I just can't read. Okay, I got a 15 plus 5, which is 20. All right. So we got two really good rolls for some saving throws there. Um, so you're going to take half this amount of damage. Mm -hmm. So um, you each take uh, six points of thunder damage and uh, seven points of radiant damage as a wave extends out from this point where he's struck in the ground. Um, and, and that was halved. I went ahead and halved it for you. Um, yeah. and, uh, you both made your saves. You feel this like wave hit you and try to like knock you over, but you are both able to stay to your feet, uh, and not be knocked prone. Uh, that is his turn. So it's back to Arla. Mm. Is this one? Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, my hiding didn't work very well, so I'm gonna stand up and call lightning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm like, mm, mm. and then lightning comes down and strikes near him. Um, and it's a DC 16 dexterity save. Uh, it looks like he has made it. Rolled an 18 okay. on the die. Let me see. I think you take half. Let me see Ooh. here. Yes. Yeah, you do. Okay. Well, let's roll damage, I guess. That's no fun. Do, do, do. Let me click up here because this doesn't like me very much. Call lightning. Okay. Call lightning is a great spell. It's a good one. And I only have to cast it once and hopefully I have to maintain concentration. So it's half of that. So I got 19, so that would be uh, math nine. nine. Nine points of lightning damage that strikes his metal armor as he's raising his sword to attack. Um, that will be it. All right, it is Thrum. Gonna try something I have never done before in D&D, and I'm gonna use my longbow. Ooh. Ooh. Um, I know there are two ranges on this. It, I'm well inside the first one. Does that mean it is at disadvantage? Which is normal. No. Normal. normal. Okay. If you're in the first one, it's normal. If you're in the second one, it's disadvantage. Beyond that, it's considered impossible. I just wasn't sure if I was too close. Um, uh, 21 to hit. Uh, that does it. Yay. And that's going to be 10 damage. Ooh, your arrow strikes uh, right in the gut, uh, finds a, a place in his armor where his shield was defending off attacks from Lydia during this fight. Um, and you're able to take advantage of this distraction. That counts as the attack action, right? So I can yes. do it again? Yep. Yay. Oh, but only... I missed that one. That was a 13. Yeah. 13 does not hit. <laughs> uh, you still have a bonus action. Um, bonus action. Oh, I should be doing that, shouldn't I? Um... Yeah, I'm going to use Planar Warrior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I forgot that I had this. Uh, so I'll mark 
the knight, and if I end up hitting him again, he'll take extra force damage. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, it's Benny's turn, so Benny will make a couple rolls here, and I'll see what he does. Uh, sort of behind the scenes. Uh, Benny throws forward a couple of good uh, stabs with his sword. Um, that land... All right. All right. He's he pokes um, at this knight and does a little bit of damage. Um, it is now Lydia's turn. Okay. Um. So, same thing. I'm gonna use the long sword. Um. I rolled a fifteen plus six is twenty one. That hits. Uh, damage. I got three damage. It's three Not damage. very good. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna try that again. Thirteen plus six. Does a, that hit? A nineteen does not hit. Okay. Um. And then I also have these things called short rests, where if I do a short rest, then next time I'll get an additional turn. So. So you can action is that surge. A thing? You can action you surge. Yeah. So that recharges yeah, on a short rest. So if you if y'all like rest for a short period of time, you get another one. But you haven't used yours, so you could... Oh, so I already have one. Yeah. yeah. You also still have a third attack you can do. Yeah, I was. I thought you had to use... You had to do a rest on in exchange for one of your attacks or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm... So I got 11 plus six, 17. That doesn't hit. That does not hit. Um, so I'll use my action surge. Yeah, so you get three more try. attacks. Oh! Yeah. Okay, well that one didn't <laughs> hit either. Right, which is great. Time. Uh, that one didn't hit. Nope. Nine plus which six. Which is great. 15. Yeah. Um, can I roll again? <laughs> Why do I keep getting 11? So I got another 11 plus uh, six, which is 17. Oh, was that my three? That was that your, three, your three, yeah. Yeah. Darn it. Wow. Sorry uh, I gave you my luck. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, <laughs> no, no. It happens. Oh. Uh, I mean, it that does. That's the that's part of the fun of D and D is you'll be rolling high and knocking them down, and then all of a sudden you'll just end up on this streak where you can't hit anything, and you're just like, oh, yeah. what's wrong with me?" <laughs> I just did the zoom in thing on my face when I did that. That's yeah. So yeah. every time it's still fun. It's funny it's every really time. Good. Uh, the red knight senses some weakness in you, Lydia, after that last flurry of blows, and is going to charge. Uh, he doesn't have to charge because you're right there in his face, but he's going to take some swings. Uh, first attack. Does a fifteen hit you? It's your armor class. Wait, how do I how do I check? Check your uh, armor you class. Oh, I am a I'm sixteen armor class. Okay, he misses you with the so first no. attack, uh, but takes another swing for twenty one. So that one's gonna hit. So that does hit. That does hit me. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so does fourteen points of slashing damage, and also does uh, 19 points of psychic damage. Uh, okay, so for so for damage earlier I had put in for my HP, I had put in um, the, I think it was 7 earlier or something? It was 13, I think we had did take damage. 13. Yeah. Um, oh, I have to do apply changes. That's why I didn't do yeah, it. So then, and then I go in, and then I, you said it was how much damage? 19? Yeah. Okay, cool. I am at 49 HP yeah. out of 81. He has so one more attack. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rolled a 15, and that doesn't hit you. Uh, oh, my gosh. Yay, so right, we needed good. that. We good needed one of those. <laughs> So, missed you first, was able to land purchase with the second attack, uh, and failed to hit you on the third. Um, all right, that puts us back up to Arla. Arla's going to do that call lightning business again. Mm, all right. Um, right, because I, yeah, I think I can do it again. Yeah, that was really yeah. good. Let's give it a go. Dex save. Make that a DC uh, 16 dex it. save. Oh yep. my gosh. Well, we'll yeah, he made it. <laughs> we'll roll the damage again. He rolled a natural twenty, I think. Um, let me see here. How much is that? That's a math. That I only uh, did eleven damage to begin with, so he only takes five. 
So he didn't actually roll a thirty-one. He had advantage, and the way I'm oh. rolling it, just it just roll it just added the two numbers. <laughs> okay, oh. I was, oh, I was okay. a little frightened by that. I was like, oh, <laughs> I thought maybe he had like a plus eleven to dex. Anyway, but you know, we we That's can fine. see each other's rolls because we're doing it yeah. in D and D Beyond in their new little um, tracker thing. Yeah. So so you do five points of damage. Five you, points you haven't of had damage. that already. Hey, I, um, I have that already, yeah, because it was 11. Yeah, got to chip that down. Uh, uh, yeah, do anything on your bonus so. action? Can I try and hide again? You can give it a shot. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be as good. Yeah, this time it's, it's a 2 plus 2, so it's a 4. Mm. <laughs> you try it again, and he's like, it's not going to work again. Aww. You hear him say, stop trying to hide, small one. <laughs> You have confronted and come for my queen, and I will not allow it. Thrum, you are up. We did not come for your queen. You are the red knight, and we seek the white queen. I'm shooting the arrows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> One of those is with an arrow, you know? This <laughs> is shooting, like saying that. Um, so I guess... Um, he, Yeah, that hits. He explains... You're headed towards the red side of the board. Uh, <clears throat> six damage. <laughs> but uh, because I had um, Planar Warrior on... Um, where did that go? I need to roll an extra 2d8. So that's six force damage, and you also take two more d8s of force damage. So... Another six. So 12 total force damage on that attack. All right. He's, he bends over this arrow finds purchase like sight right in the center of his chest. You can tell it just pierced through his armor and has sh struck into his cavity uh, above his heart. Uh, and he seems to be struggling. I'm going to follow it up with another arrow. All right. Why is the white queen... On the red side of the board. Uh, he coughs up some blood as you let your arrow fly uh, and says, The pawn crossed the board and became a queen. I see. Okay. So I that's a 25 to hit. Um, and you, can, you don't have to roll. You can go ahead and tell <laughs> me how you kill him because he has one hit point left. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, as, as he says that the pawn crossed the board uh, and became a queen the arrow oh. just goes right in like right as he finishes that sentence giving us the info we need um, hits squarely in the chest uh, roundabout like where the heart would be right in the heart and yeah. he, he falls over dead on the ground Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Oh my god. Can we can we take a break? I need to break. I want to take a break. Break, break, break. <laughs> can we rest, rest, please, rest. No break would be okay. Maybe Let's I don't move really move away from the body though. Yeah, I like that idea. Um while while we take uh, like I what if uh, I was like Oh, what? Okay, if you guys take a rest, I could make something really good to make us feel. It'll make everybody feel a little better. Um, and, but you guys can, you guys can roll your hit dice. But I'll, I'll do something <laughs> to make us feel better. Um, so I'm going to. Ar Arla is going to prepare a hero's feast while, um, okay, while everybody else rests. Um, so a hero's feast. I'll cast it. Does um, it gives us? It, it'll give you temporary hit points, like it's added to your total. Um, so you add this to the side, so everybody gets 14 extra hit points. Um, so I, I was not expecting uh, combat where we actually did actual normal D&D &D combat after our first <laughs> game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Always tricking you. <laughs> Make you think it's all going to be weird, and then I throw something normal at you. Take Ooh. that. <laughs> um, and just as a heads up to everyone, um, so for Heroes Feast, we all <coughs> spend an hour consuming the feast or whatever, and um, 
we uh, so we are cured of all diseases and poison, which is not a big deal. But you are now immune to poison and being frightened. You cannot be frightened. You cannot be poisoned. And also, any wisdom saving throws you have coming up, you get advantage. And actually, it's not temporary hit points. It's our tr total maximum hit points increases by that 14. So you can just, like, change your max plus four add 14 to it. Because, like, even if I heal you, it should... Um, should do that so you can uh, if you click on your max hp there's a max hp modifier and you should click that to 14 well, yeah i did there's a little a temporary HP yeah there's thing. a temp one you put it in the temp one but it's cool. not it's not technically temporary hit points because if you go below uh, it you can be healed up to that point oh, for okay. 24 so hours it increases your max it's for 24 hours oh so it's the max hp modifier yeah is what? okay yeah you'll change Sorry. that plus um if you if you have max hp modifier that's what you'll want to do because yeah, it's better than temporary hit points because they, if you go down, you could still be healed up through that point. Awesome. Okay, my max HP is up to 95. Yeah. So y'all have a short rest and do a little healing, a little snacking. Uh, but you can roll your hit dice for that. Um, Danny, um, I don't know if you've done that before, if we did that last campaign. Can't remember. I don't think we did. Where is that one? So you um, can just roll, yeah, so you're a fighter, so you get a D10. So you can roll a number of D10s up to your level, which is 11, um, and you, but you only get half of them back on a long rest. So you can eventually run out of them. Probably not a big deal for a one-shot, though. Yeah. So I can do that later if we're in combat again? Only if you're taking a or rest. You have, you have a second wind, which you can use during combat, though. Okay. Wait, so should I roll the d10 now? Yeah, because you're resting. Okay. So you okay. And you can roll up to, how many is it? Like, it's 11. 11 d10s if you yeah, need to roll more. So if you want to heal up a little extra, okay. you can roll up to 11 d10s. Okay. I got three and three and... <laughs> yeah, sometimes you roll low. You're like, I'm only going to roll like two hit dice. And you're like, JK, I'm going to roll five hit dice. And two. Right. <laughs> two. What is your. And I'll just do. What's I'll your just... con modifier? Because you also add that to each one. Oh, yeah, yeah, add that to each one of those. Oh, my. Wait, my constitution modifier? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's five. Plus five. So. Oh, okay. I did. I rolled three, three, two, two. So you go eight, eight, seven, seven, nine. You're probably okay, you good. Roll. Yeah, you're probably good at eight that. Eight plus eight plus seven plus seven plus nine. Just putting that into Google real quick. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I'm good. That was thirty nine. Yeah, and I ended up using five cool. hit dice, and I'm nice. basically up to max now. Awesome. Good. Love that. Love that for us. All right. So y'all healed up and had a nice okay. feast. What are you doing? Uh, go into the next square, I think. All right. So y'all walk. Uh, you leave this square, this sort of more desolate square, which it's returned to after the death of the night. The courtyard sort of vanishes. Um, and you reach a very dense forest. Um, as you're walking through it, um, you eventually come to a clearing. In the clearing, there is a deer uh, who is standing on his hind legs. He looks to be anthropomorphic, which you're sort of used to at this point in the Feywild. Um, he's standing behind what looks to be a little rickety um, stand with a little sign on it that says acorns for sale. And he sees you and he, he sort of waves. Mm, hello there. My name is Emissary oh, Hold on. Hold on. Before you answer. Give me an intelligence saving throw. Oh, what? What? <laughs> Uh, that would be a number that I have to scroll down and see at 19. Let's see. Um, you do remember your name. <laughs> uh, Lydia and Arla, can I get you to roll me intelligence saving throws? <laughs> I rolled a 15. Uh, yeah, you don't remember. I rolled... A 22? I rolled a 22. Plus, 
So you remember Six. your name, Arla. Lydia, you, you're sure you had a name at some point in time. You're not <laughs> sure. Uh, the deer goes, oh, it's nice to meet you. Uh, did you say Thrum? I My am name is Emissary Thrum. Emissary Who are you? Thrum. He says, uh, uh, mm. and he like looks down at the sign on the front of the stand. He goes, I'm Acorn. And I, uh, I'm for sale. No, that doesn't seem right. I'm selling acorn. I'm, I'm acorn. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hello, acorn. Mm-hmm. At, uh, at, uh, what's your name? I don't remember. I think I had one at some point. Do I remember Lydia's name? Give me an intelligence saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I don't like this. 18? Uh, just, you, you have to think about it for a little while. Uh, but you're like, Lydia, it's Lydia. <laughs> do I remember, like, what, do we remember, like, why we're there? Uh, you're starting to wonder why you're here. Uh, maybe you were here to buy acorns. Oh no. Oh. Uh, uh, can't. <laughs> this is so I'm scared. Arla. I'm Arla. I'm Arla. How this much do you want for the Lydia. acorn? Uh oh. Yeah, things cost money. Um Do you got anything to trade? What are you what what would be of interest? I have many things. I have... I have things. I have ten currency. Uh, I have ten, ten gold. I have um, a bedroll and a backpack. Well, I wouldn't give up the backpack, but uh, I have ink and a pen. It says, I like kit. that. I like that pen. Do you call that a pen? Last I checked, it's a pen. It says, yeah, I'll trade you an acorn for that pen. I will hand over the pen, but not the uh, ink. Gives you, uh, <laughs> pushes an acorn across the table and says, good doing business with you. What'd you say your name was? Do I still remember? Uh, give me an intelligence. <laughs> 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 I, I assume I have to check again. <laughs> um... Uh, 11. <laughs> I've forgotten. He says, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you don't remember your name at the moment. And he's like, uh, it's good to meet you. Uh, I am, um, I'm Penn. Uh, you know. Uh, nice to meet you, Penn. Do I have the wherewithal to know that, like, something weird is happening? Like, what, what, what yeah. level of. Yeah. Okay. You Can I cast something a weird spell? Was happening for a while. Yeah. Can I cast a spell magic? You can. Mm. This is the Feywild. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Questionable. I'll save it, knowing that this is probably something. Uh, like, am I aware that I, we're losing memories? You are currently aware that it seems as though Lydia does not know who she is. What? Just is there s curious? Is it a charm effect? It is not a charm effect. Okay. Yeah, can I, we just? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was yeah. I was gonna say because okay. I am immune to that. But um, can I say like, oh, what's there's something happening here with memory? Why? Do you know anything about that? Are you doing it? Uh, he looks for a second. Just looks at the table and says, "I think I saw acorns." You do. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> can we just, like, leave? Like, if we start walking forward? Uh, Lydia, Although give me I guess I don't why would we another. do that? Give me another intelligence saving throw, Lydia. I have a plus zero <laughs> on my intelligence. So, I got a 12. Okay. You're not sure why you're here. You may be here to sell pins. Can... 
Can Arla grab Lydia's hand and start trying to walk away, or is like, sure. do, I, do I need to make a shade saving throw? No. If you're just like okay. grabbing her and bolting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you run. Uh, as soon as you start walking away, he's like, "It's nice to meet you. Uh, bye, I guess." I don't like, it, like, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't turns, like it. I don't like it. Turns back to to Thrum and is like, "Uh, hi, I'm." He pauses for a second. Uh, Acorn. Um, nice Hello, to. Hello, Acorn. Do I remember uh, Thrum's name? Uh, give me a. <laughs> save you know that was coming. <laughs> I thought I'd. I thought I'd ask, and I thought I'd allow for it. Seventeen. Mm, you don't remember Thrum's name. Oh, dang it, person! No, <laughs> come, come with us. Uh, Acorn, Acorn, Acorn starts going. coming with you. <laughs> he goes. I think. I think my f- my friend is calling me. I gotta go. Shit. Uh, <laughs> nice to meet you. Bye. Well, I'm going. Okay, bye. Uh, and this comes over to you, Arla. Is like, hi. Uh, no, friend. the other one. Other person. Other person. Other oh. person. <laughs> Me? Yes. Yes, you come. Mm, come with us. I thought I was here. Don't. Selling acorn. No. I'm selling pens. Hey, I you're know. selling acorns? <laughs> I sell acorns. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, let's go! <laughs> I guess I'll follow. <laughs> Acorn's like, you all right. You can come too. Acorn, you can come too. You come <laughs> yeah, with Acorn's us. Acorn's coming with us. All right, he's like, <laughs> all right. Hi, new friends. Let's, where are we going? We're just going anywhere, not here. <laughs> Any Forward, forward. All right. And starts walking with you. Um, you walk. Uh you, uh, Arla, you are still in your right mind, just barely as you are s- realize you're slowly forgetting the names of these people who are following you, um, pondering for just a moment if you were supposed to be selling mushrooms. Um, uh, <laughs> and right around that's the my time... my day job. <laughs> <laughs> right around the time you exit this forest, uh, the moment you're out of it, you feel your memories start rushing back to you. Um, and the you start remembering your actual name and the names of your compatriots. And there's a moment where the um, deer is looking at y'all and then goes, Oh snap, y'all are people. And then it just runs away. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right, cool. People come and go so strangely here. (laughs) (laughs) So what, what are, oh sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I have a headache. Oh, I was going to say, where where are we? Oh, you should. Don't you know? Don't we're in? We're okay. This is going to be a lot. How much? How far back do I go? Oh, no. Like what square are we in? (laughs) Oh, uh, we went through. We were on the second square is kind of where we started on the field where the prison was. And then we went to the wall square and then we went to the night square. Math. Then the forgetting square. So we're on the sixth square. We just need to get to the eighth. So we've, right? Uh, I I forget. That seems so. Right. What is wh- where are we at the moment? So you are in a set of rolling hills, um, spotted with some light trees. Uh, it's it's a nice like sort of pastoral scene. Um, and as you are walking through this, up ahead, uh, you see two gnomes. Uh, they are dressed in um, overalls, and each of them have a little straw hat. Uh, one of them is male, and one of them is female, and you can tell pretty quickly, even from a distance, that they are twins. Uh, and they seem to be bickering over something. Hello, fellow gnomes, I say in gnome. Uh, as you walk up, you hear in gnomish one of them say, No, you broke it! And then they turn and they go, Hello! Like, simultaneously. So do we understand them, or is it just Arla? Uh, they respond in common. Okay. Well, what, what got broken? I say in common. Go back to common. Pinkle broke it. My Pinkle? favorite toy. And the other one responds, no, Twinkle broke it. Goes, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. I am Twinkle Von Borshire. And the other one says, and I'm Pinkle Von Verschnire. That's Pinkle with a P? Yes, Pinkle with a P. Pinkle and Twinkle. 
Mm-hmm. I'm Lydia. What did you guys break? Twinkle broke my favorite toy. Can what I, is it? What toy? It's a rattle. Can I see it? It's broken. Well, I, it's broken I can forever. maybe help a little bit, though. And uh, there's a moment where Pinkle stops and is like looking at y'all and goes, Wait a minute. Y'all aren't supposed to be here. Yeah, we are. We went all no. the way across the board. No, you're not. No. Well, let's just say, you know, you're not right. You're not from here. I mean, we're not from here either, but we're here now. Where are you from? Oh, we're from the Feywild. Why Isn't this the are Feywild? you here? Oh, we're here because we got caught up here. It happens sometimes. Not a big deal. Mm, come with us and we'll take you back. Where are you going? We're collecting Alice and then returning to the Feywild. Mm, collecting Alice? And they like, look I, back at the castle. Yeah. She wants to leave. We've talked to her. Well, Benny talked to her. I sent her a bird. Mm. She should just leave. She can't. Hmm. Sounds like she hasn't figured it out yet. Hasn't Why figured it out. Who are you? What are you doing? Traipsing across. We're here to we're here to get Alice. We're worried about her, and we want to take her home. Hmm. I'm surprised you've made it this far. Why? Why? You know, there's usually a lot of things you got to go through to get here. Mm, I don't remember things. how many we faced, but a few at least. Twinkle sort of like looks over at Pinkle and says, I think they're pawns. He goes, oh, pawns made it this far. That's what we've been told. We've been told that we're pawns. By? A voice. The voice? The Red Queen? Yeah, and I think that says the Red Queen's not real. And Twinkle goes, "Hush, Pinkle." What? What do you mean? There's no Red Queen. Insight. Can we get an insight check on that maybe? <laughs> sure. This is where I'm going to roll badly. I got a 17. <laughs> I rolled just as badly as I always do. <laughs> I have a, a plus nine. 7 oh. on insight and I got a total <laughs> of 9. Oh no, yeah. I only had a plus 4, but I got a 17. <laughs> I rolled a 13 in sight. 13. So with your 17, you feel like they're telling the truth. How what? Uh, how do you know the Red Queen's not real? <coughs> because she's always not real. Silly. She doesn't exist. Then who's, well, who's the voice? Well, I mean, you might have heard her voice. That doesn't mean she's real. Because what's really going on, and then all of a sudden you hear a loud caw, and an enormous crow descends um, onto the area, this little hill you've been sitting on. Um, through them you realize it's coming, like right as it uh, is arriving, it flying straight for Lydia. Um, I'm going to give you a chance to do something, um, but Lydia, you can go ahead and make your dexterity saving throw. Okay. For a second, I thought it was going to scoop up one of the gnomes. That me was too. Be sad. <laughs> yeah, a dexterity saving throw. I think it's scooping up you makes me more sad, though. <laughs> I I rolled a four uh, plus three, which is seven. Ooh, four, four plus three plus seven. Throom, do you have no, something? No, no, sorry, no, four plus three. Oh, okay, so, so seven. just seven. It's just seven. It's just seven. I mean, Got yeah. something you want, want to try? Sure, I mean, the kind of the best thing i have though is just to shoot it okay uh I mean, do i have time to um do my bonus action uh you don't have time to do a bonus action okay this is sort of uh this is sort of like a reactionary yeah i almost I like an attack of opportunity situation had somewhat assumed that i will just go ahead and use my longbow a 19 to hit uh 19 does hit go ahead and roll some damage it's not a lot of damage but <laughs> Six damage again. 
Uh, so you, you strike this arrow into its side. It looks over at you and caws loudly as it grabs Lydia's sword and starts <gasps> flying off. No! The gnomes uh. go screech in terror and just start, like, bolting to, like, the biggest tree they can find. I um, I turn into a giant eagle and start going after. Okay. So you're you're diving into Giant the owl. Giant form. owl. We'll go giant owl. Giant Giant I owl which form. Which one has the faster? Um, we'll go giant owl. I have that up. All right, uh, Lydia Throom, y'all can tell me things that you would like to attempt. We're not going to go into initiative for this, but you can let me know what your sort of plans, your responses would be. Um, I'm just. I don't really have. I mean, I have a hand axe. I don't know if I can. You can throw a hand throw, axe. It, it does have range. It has. It says 20. Yeah. Um, should I try that? Yeah. You can okay. give it, so you're throwing your hand axe. Um, throw him. Yeah. Shoot more. I got an 8, uh, then a plus 6, so I have a 14. Um, for the 14 hand axe. does not hit. Rip. Can I try and get it in my net? Uh, it is a or has it humongous <laughs> creature, uh, oh. so or a huge uh, creature. So probably not, unless you got a real big net. So I, I assume my shooting the bow was the reaction to seeing it coming towards us, and that yeah, and that's um, for your your ranger. Like, yeah. Surprise so this. for my um actual like action when it gets near, can I just jump on it? Uh, sure. Yeah, give me a. Dexterity acrobatics check. <laughs> okay, so dexterity, I have a plus seven. Acrobatics, I don't. Okay, yeah. Which I mean, one it's do just, you... It's, 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 it's dex plus if you have something for that particular... Like, if you have a proficiency in it, you get extra. So whatever your dex bonus is, you roll that to start off with. Okay. So d20 plus seven. So that's a t- <laughs> 12. No, <laughs> 12. Uh, so 15 total, sorry. Um... I, if I just do acrobatics, though, it's seventeen. <laughs> yeah. uh, so with your seventeen, you're you're sort of uh, holding on to its tail feathers. Uh, <laughs> Lydia chucks an axe, doesn't quite get high enough to hit the uh, the crow, and meanwhile we have a giant owl that is, I assume, like trying to swoop in. Following. Yeah. What's their fly speed? Am I able to keep catch up or keep up? Uh, let's see. Fly speed. Into, uh, Fly speed. Fly speed. Eighty eagle. feet. God dang! <laughs> oh my god! I, I also have acrobatics, and I also have animal handling. I don't know if either of those would work, but maybe if I do acrobatics, I could grab on with Room. Go for it. <laughs> Give it a <laughs> shot. I roll a natural one. <laughs> um, it's plus five, so it's six. You jump and just miss grabbing its <laughs> feathers and you sort of fall trip a little bit can i like um, grab lydia no uh, i don't like want pick her up and car- you don't want to do you want to carry or not <laughs> how up for it does lydia seem like when i look at her as i'm about to potentially grab her how do, how up for it what do i see in her face i don't know did i just face plant <laughs> Uh, you tripped a little bit. You didn't really like face plan all the way. I'm probably fine. I'm probably up for it. I want my sword back. Okay. I um I do indeed grab her. I mean all I right. assume. Uh Thrum, uh you hold on as this um crow flies. Really actually not far away. It only actually takes a turn for it to get there, but it flies you realize for a moment, like, you're not sure how you missed this, but there's a really big tree with a giant nest sitting on top of it on, like, the next hill over. And it flies over and, like, lands in that nest and, like, drops the sword on a pile of, like, shiny crap that's just lying in this nest. Um, and uh, has sort of landed there. You are dangling over the side because you're on its tail feathers and just sort of, like, oh, hanging over the side of this uh, thing. Uh. But... Yeah, um, Arla, it actually sees you because you're a giant owl, and yeah. it turns and there is a there's a pretty frantic look that it gives you, uh, and immediately like takes off um, to like fly away. It hadn't seen you previously before this, 
Thrum, it is trying to fly away, essentially, so it's in a <laughs> frantic mode. I'm going to need you to give me an athletics check to hold on oh as no. it's, oh uh, no. like, flailing uh, its feathers as fast as it can. Um, I mean, owls are natural predators to crows. A that is a good... 17. <laughs> that is a good athletics check. Uh, you are able to hold on. It's just flying away as quickly as it can. Uh, <laughs> what is everybody doing? <laughs> Did it... So it dropped the sword in the... Yeah. So it got the sword and it started flying back to its nest. It seemed to ignore for the most part that Thrum was on its tail feathers. Uh, and when it laid it down, it turned like it was going to come back and then it saw you as an owl and was like, no, I'm out. Bye. Arla, can you, can you grab my sword for me <laughs> from the nest? I'm kind of grabbing you right now. So oh, that's right. Can you, can you put me down? <laughs> um... I yeah. So I think what I would do is I would drop. <laughs> this is a bad idea. I am sure we'll drop Lydia in the nest with the sword and any other stuff that she can scavenge that she feels like, do and I will then try to um, fly below the crow if at all possible, to like allow. Th uh, but I'm I'm not that big. What through what what size are you? This is medium. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I can. I can handle. It. Yeah, that's fine. Then I'm okay. Yeah, I'll. I'll like kind of glide underneath to be like, hey, through. I'm only seven ten and and three hundred and seventy five yeah. pounds. I still. That's count not as so medium. bad. I just wanted to make sure, because I can. I can then. I think I can. You can. Yeah, we'll be okay. So you fly under through. Are you doing anything in particular? <laughs> um. I'm gonna just try and pull out one of these tail feathers. Oh, okay. Just going to try to rip one out. Yep. Grab a hold of one. Give me a strength check. Oh, there's the button. No. Oh, no, no, I do not. <laughs> that, is <laughs> that is a two. That is <laughs> two. You are unable to pull out a tail feather. <laughs> um, and it keeps flying. Uh, it's getting further and further into the distance. Drop, um, drop down, drop down, drop down. I'll, I'll let go and try and land on Arla. All right, you land. Uh, Arla, give me uh, strength athletics. Thrum, give me an acrobatics to see one if you oh, can land on, on <laughs> and two if you can not tumble at the sudden. Oh, that's a good acrobatics check. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> land right on uh, okay. this owl. I get a, the I get a plus. I get a plus one to this, actually, because this is going to be... Oh, no. I got a ten. Ugh. Oh. So <laughs> you start falling. You realize you were not ready for this sudden drop of weight, despite the fact that you told <laughs> Thrum to drop. Um, <laughs> we, what are we going to do? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you basically make a crash landing into a tree. Um and you both uh, take... Look out for that tree! Uh, <laughs> you both take six points of... Or five points of bludgeoning damage uh, from the branches of this tree as you smash into it. All right. There we go. And then I'm like, uh, let's go. Let's go get... Let's go get Lydia. And I fly, fly through and back to the nest or I go back where I think the nest is. Okay. Yeah, Lydia, you can find your sword. There's a lot of strange trinkets here. There's some silver dinner plates, and um, there's a broken rattle that you find. There's uh, <laughs> just a lot of junk, but it's a lot of it's shiny and, and sort of uh, bright and um, polished. Can I grab the... I'll grab my sword, and then I'll grab the broken rattle as well. Okay. Yeah, and about the time that you're sort of rummaging through here, you see the the giant owl and carrying through him more uh more capable this time because it wasn't a sudden drop uh yeah, back yeah. to the nest uh, and i think I'll, I'll put through him on the ground and then pick up lydia and put lydia on the ground all right uh, thank you arla we, i i did what i could um the rattle how is it broken uh, it just seems to have been dropped, and like the the bulb on it has broken open. You're not sure where the stuff that was in it is the actual rattling material. Um, I I have some pebbles. Can I put some pebbles in and then use mending to put it back together? You can. 
Uh, so you mend this rattle back. Around the time y'all are landing, you see the, the two gnomes. Uh, they're like hiding in like a, a hole in the opening of the bottom of the tree. Like poke their heads out and they're like, is it gone? Yeah. It's a lot of a lot of birds are... F- I'll go ahead through them. The bird flew away in that direction. Oh, wow. That was scary. They both crawl up out of the hole. Ugh. Ugh. I fixed your rattle. <gasps> my rattle. And Twinkle takes it and, and Pinkle's like, that's my rattle. And starts, they're like fighting over it. Um, oh, no. Yeah. They're just going back and forth. Um, sort of like yelling at each other. Uh, and and Twinkle's like, I think we're going to have to have a fight. And Pinkle's like, I agree. Well, you guys have fun with that. Uh, should we, because they, if, um, if they're not too wrapped up in fighting, can I, I guess I'll ask them, um, so earlier, how did, how did you guys become not pawns anymore? Because it doesn't seem like you guys are pawns. We were never pawns. We just got trapped here in the dream. In the dream? Fighting. It's like, I told you it's my rattle. Yeah, the dream. The dream that you're in. The dream that we're all in right now. This is a dream. How do we wake up? It's not your dream. <laughs> Bigel looks at it. It's like, <laughs> it's not your dream. It's not your dream. Whose dream is this? Oh, the Red King's dream. How do we, how do we get, how do we wake him up? You gotta find him first. Where is he? Is he in the castle? He's where kings are. That's usually the castle, I think. All right. Thank you for your information, gnomes. Well, good luck. Please don't fight over. Thank you. Yeah, one of them waves, and the Pinkle takes the opportunity to snatch the rattle away and is over there playing <laughs> with it. Twinkle's like yeah. reaching over his shoulders, trying to get it back. Um. Cool. Should we head on forward to the next square? Yeah. So the Sounds next good. square is the castle. Oh. Uh-huh. Is there an entrance? There is a very large entrance. Um, How convenient. When you <laughs> yes, there's a very <laughs> large door uh, to this castle. Do you enter? Yeah, I guess I, so. Uh, earlier I said I was going to be breaking in and I served my jail time. So I feel comfortable... Uh, I feel comfortable going into the castle. I haven't oh. killed a lawyer yet. So, <laughs> as, as you <laughs> say that, I haven't a lawyer. <laughs> as you say him. that, a uh, the the sheep, sort of from behind you, goes. So, uh, I just want just a point of clarification, and I'm not saying anything, but I noticed that y'all, uh, y'all killed a red the red knight. Um, were you thinking about letting me know that that was going to be your crime? I thought that was you. I thought that was one of the rules. It's one of the rules of this place. Well, so you're sort of doing this. Let's be honest. You're doing this out of order. So, I mean, the order is you go to jail. Then you have a trial. Then you commit the crime. You haven't had your trial yet. You're committing the crimes too early. I don't know. Maybe I can get you out on a technicality because you did things in the wrong order. But, uh, I mean, I did explicitly ask that you let me know what your crime was going to be and uh, just, you know, murder. I'll write that down and I'll go see what I can do. But I don't know. We're just, and he's, he's like walking away and he's like, I don't know where, how we're even going to schedule this anymore, really. <laughs> When's the, when is the trial? When can we have it? Well, I don't It was supposed to be tomorrow, I guess. But now you're you already committed the crime. So we were supposed to have trial. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. I take a small mushroom spore and turn it into like a really pretty like purple and pink mushroom and I give it to him and I'm like, thank you. Thank you for uh, your help. I accept actual money for payment. I'm, yeah, hey, I can't live off mushrooms. Yes, you can. <laughs> I don't understand I don't have know what you're thinking loan about. Debt. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet law school's a law school's a pretty penny. Law school's expensive for sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, well, let's go into the... He's like, it's fine, I'll send you the bill for my retainer. 
<laughs> oh no. Um, He's looking right off writing notes as he goes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Um, so you're going in. So you uh, you open the door. Uh, you enter a extremely large dining room. Um, this place is packed with anthropomorphic creatures, humanoids, elves, gnomes, halflings. Um, and in the center of it, as soon as y'all enter, the doors slam shut behind you. Um, and you hear um, a voice cry out um, from a what appears to be like a town crier, someone who's dressed in this like frilly little like neck um, uh I don't know what you call those things anymore, but the rough. weird little ruffles sort of things. It's, it's a rough. Rough. A neck rough. Yeah, that thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and says, mix sand with the cider and wool with the wine and welcome Queen Alice with 90 times 9. And a door at the far end of this uh, dinner, this dining hall opens. And you see uh, a young woman of 21 years old. Uh, with sort of uh, light brown hair. She's wearing a set of uh, robes uh, and walks in. She has a, a rather large book at her side uh, in a little leather um, strap that goes across her belt. Um, and she walks in. She has an extraordinarily exasperated look on her face. She is wearing a, a crown that is obviously sort of magical in its construction. Um, and has a little like glowing white light on the top of it. Uh, she walks in, comes down a small little set of stairs. It takes a seat at the head of this, the far side of the table. Um, and at the other side, the side that y'all have come in on, you can see there is a very prim looking woman. Uh, she is also wearing a crown. Hers is a blazoned metal um, that is uh, colored with a sort of a red tint to it. She um, she doesn't look exasperated. She looks um, a little unimpressed, um, but is, is sort of sitting there. Um, very good posture. Um, she is rather plain looking, although her her hair is braided up. Um, in a very fancy manner and her clothes are pristine um, every stitch and thread in place but um, otherwise not particularly extraordinary um, in in the way she appears compared to uh, some of the other royalty that y'all have seen over the years um, she's just sort of sitting there she has her arms crossed she's staring across the table um, and Alice is sitting there and uh, happens to like look up and y'all are very far away from her at this point but sees you and you can tell even from this distance like her eyes get wide and she just starts waving at you. What do you do? Oh no. Hi Alice. Is there any birds in here? Probably not. There are some anthropomorphic birds. No. Just start they're walking not useful. Over to Alice. Ignore everybody and just head for Alice. Yeah. Yeah. So I would like to. We're gonna pass by the Red Queen, though, right? Or presumptively yeah. the Red Queen. Can I like give her a? Does she look like physical, like real? Like how real does she look? Oh, she looks real. She looks as real as everybody else here. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay. Then I'll go with everyone else. Okay, so y'all walk by. The queen looks over at you. She doesn't say or do anything. She watches you for a little ways and then just goes back to sort of staring off um, into the distance. Um, as y'all head down here, all the people who are sort of sitting, um, they're very quietly, like, drinking tea and wine and eating food. And slowly, like, they're talking to each other and starts getting louder and louder um, as you reach the other end of the table. And Alice goes... Why have you come here? Oh no. You're trapped now. Oh. We're he Why We're would here. we be trapped? She says this place, this room, it's some sort of loop. And um, 
as she's talking to you, you notice that the people around you are sort of getting like more excited and some of them are standing up and very emphatically like telling stories. Uh, and the, the room's getting a little like louder and louder. So you got to start talking like more loudly. Um, Alice, do you know where the queen is? I mean, sorry, not the queen, the king. She says, no, I haven't, I haven't seen a king. All I see is she gestures down the table and says her. Have you talked to her much? Talked to her? Killed her a few times? It doesn't matter. This this party's getting more rambunctious. People are standing. Some, like somebody's knocking stuff off the table, seemingly for fun. Um, you see a, a um, rather large dodo, like, uh, kicking things off the table and, like, singing a little song <laughs> and throwing his, like, mug up in the air. Y'all recognize him? <laughs> is it so so? Uh, yeah, it is so so. <laughs> Yay! We found him. Love, love that guy. Uh, is there any, um, is there any sort of like door or like leading out of the dining hall? Not the entrance, but like another door leading farther into the castle. There's a door that Alice came through, which was at the opposite side of the dining hall from the door that y'all came in. Um, can I try to open it? Yeah. As you walk over there, she says, it won't work. Um, and you open the door, and on the other side, it's actually just a small, dark room. And she says, I always come out of there. And um, the room is getting, like, louder and louder. And she goes, and this is, and this is it. And, like, right as everybody, like, turns, and they, like, raise their glasses to Alice... Uh, there's a moment where everything flashes and y'all are standing back at the door that y'all came through into the room and you hear a voice at a collar say mix sand with the cider and wool with the wine and welcome Queen Alice with 90 times 9 uh, and at that moment the doors at the far end open and Alice walks down the stairs and she just makes this gesture to y'all as she goes and sits at the in table the room? Uh, so y'all are going to take some time to count. Is it 810 people? Um, you walk through the place. I assume you're dedicated to this, uh, trying to count. Uh, there are 801 people in this room. We need nine more people. Oh. oh. Mm, we don't have oh. 90 times nine yet. Um, Arla, is there anyone that you could, maybe any animals that you could call? I'm trying to look and see. I don't think normally I can, sometimes, sometimes I can bring some, some beans here. Um, but not right now, unfortunately. Okay. Um, Unless we took a long rest here, but I don't think... I think with this loop, a long rest would be very challenging because we'd probably <laughs> wake up by the front door every five minutes. I mean, I also have Animal Messenger, but that says... That doesn't A beast you can anything. see. Yeah, yeah, you have to have a beast uh, here already. Is the 800... So you said it's 800 and... 810 is 90 times 9, and we counted 801. And one. Yeah. And so, so the, to count all the people in the room, like, it takes, like, time. probably takes several loops. You see this same thing play out. Everybody gets more raucous. Go, So-So jumps up on the table and starts singing his little song again. And then the moment they all turn and, like, raise their glasses in Alice's direction, y'all are back at the front. Um, and this announcement goes, and Alice walks down the stairs. Um, this just look of disgust on her face. Um... How many people so does Benny count as with his horse and his <laughs> <laughs> and his ferret? And his ferret. <laughs> or weasel. <clears throat> um, I mean, he was he was in your count originally. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, okay. so is, yeah. Um, can we talk to the queen, the red queen? Yeah. The, yeah. Um, hello. Hello. I see you've made it here. We have. Thank you for having us. Um, I assume you all want any... crowns. No, we just want to go go back to the Feywild with Alice. And we also, Mir has been a little bit problematic for the Fey folk. And uh, 
Y you know, it's just been a, it's been a bad time. I don't understand a word you said. Uh, that sounded like poor person talk. <laughs> You're dirty. Uh, <laughs> is there any way that we can invite other mm -hmm. people here so we can celebrate you? Who would you invite? What What about um, we could bring in Sir Dumpty and... Um, you mean Flumpty? Yes. We call him Sir Dumpty. That could be entertaining. Here. He makes me laugh when he makes fun of people. We could bring. There's a uh, there's a friendly crow around. They they'd have a great time here. Um, the giant boy. crow that keeps stealing all the things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. And um, pink, who, pink, pink, pinkle, pinkle, and pinkle and twinkle, twinkle. 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 That'd um, be great. There's, there's a really. Oh, there's a doe named Acorn. They're great. Love and them. And the sheep lawyer. Sheep, Mr. Sheep lawyer. He's our lawyer. Yeah. I Harold Watanabe. <laughs> yes. Harold Watanabe. I did give him a mushroom. Esquire. Sorry. I'm not great with full names sometimes. Um, some other people, maybe. Uh, hmm. Math is there's hard. the red knight. Maybe he didn't. I heard he died, died. recently. Uh, you could probably like uh, uh, res him or something. You know, give him a little bonus life thing. Fine, I'll bring him back. <laughs> um. And so, like right around this time, y'all get reset. <laughs> so back. That's, back to her. that's seven more seven. people. Seven. Uh, um. We need two more. Uh, we're probably missing some people that we met along what the way. What are you talking about? Nothing. Nothing at all. So, um, so here's can we invite the grass to come? <laughs> so here's one <laughs> factor that you would have picked up on immediately is Alice seems to remember every one of these iterations. The queen no does not. Does. Like when you start having this oh. conversation with her, she's like, fine, I guess we can invite some more people. Okay, we would like for you to invite uh, Pinkle and Twinkle. Um, the, f I mean, yeah, uh, the friendly crow, the red knight. If you revive him, Humpty, Flumpty, Dumpty. Uh, How long will it take to invite acorn? them? Acorn. Yeah. I mean, we can have them show up on the next loop. But yes, you. Please, that wait, I thought you didn't remember the loops. When do they happen? Could you have them come here for the next loop? Sure. Around this time, like things have gotten chaotic again, and y'all flip. Yeah. The creatures that you this time when you come through, the creatures that you have named, the seven, are in the room when this loop starts. So we um, need two more though. We do need two more right now. Hey, there's some cool grass. Can we invite the cool grass? You want to invite grass to a royal party? I. I'm a druid, of course. I would invite grass to a royal party. Mm. These are the friends that you have for your court, apparently. Grass. Yeah. It'll be a magnificent ballet. <laughs> <laughs> and then also the bird, the messenger bird from the beginning. Yeah, I had a messenger bird friend who was trying to come in here. I don't know if they ever made it, but I, they're, they're a fond friend. Fine. Uh, so this <laughs> loop goes through again. There's a weird patch mm -hmm. of grass. Uh, <laughs> hey, grass. On the ground. It's like, hey, thanks for inviting me. I love parties. <laughs> 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 Nobody ever thinks to invite grass to a party. Glad I can rely on you, Arla. <laughs> you're welcome. I'm happy you're here. Um, and there's the bird. Is like, hey, hey. Uh, she's over there. <laughs> Should I go <laughs> give her that message? <laughs> yes. Okay, yes. I'll be right back. <laughs> Please deliver the message. Flies over there. Um, so what y'all see is um, this party continues to sort of play out. There's a bird talking to Alice, and she's looking at it like, what? Yeah, they're right there. <laughs> what do you mean, where am I? Because <laughs> it's literally talking to her. <laughs> like, like, 
why are you telling me this? Why can't they just walk down here? And I, or I just yell it. Why did y'all send a bird down here? I sent it a long time ago. A long time ago. Um, and it's right about that time it gets to the point where everybody goes, raises up their glasses to Queen Alice, and they go, cheer, cheer. Like, here, here. And there's like a weird pause, and it's sort of awkward, and y'all like, there's like this moment of like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And you worry that everything's frozen. And then people are like, oh, yeah. And, and you hear and you hear Sosa go, well, I never got this far before. Do we drink? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, drinking sounds pretty good. Then you take a, a sip of your beverage. Ah. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Jonathan, your camera. <laughs> it's traumatic. Um, so yeah, and they just start drinking. And then people start like, there's, there's sort of like a strange confusion where people are like, uh, all right, what do we do now? I guess. And they just start like chatting. Things like calm down a lot, and people are just sort of like, yeah, like, uh, I guess she's queen now. That's pretty cool. And Alice is like, and she just starts bolting towards the door. Y'all came. <laughs> I think we we go with her. We yeah. like hang with her, flank her on the sides. Um, I I I think I would want to check out the room that she came through because I kind of want to find this, see if this hypothetical king exists in the castle. Okay, we already checked that room. It was just an empty black void. I but like that was when the loop was happening, oh. so I'm wondering if maybe it prob it might oh, still be a black void, but I'm following Alice, but I motioned to the bird to come with me in case I need to like get back with Arla at any point, like get Arla back to us. <laughs> yeah. So so you open the doors on the far side where Alice was coming through and it's still just it's like a small room. Like there is a room there, but there's no doors in it. There's no like it's like a weird closet but rather large that you put somebody in just to open these doors and then like them walk out into this room dramatically um okay. but it is still in that fashion um those of you who went for with alice she like kicks open the doors you are back on this like the stoop outside this castle and she looks around and she goes oh my oh oh you don't understand how many times i had to listen to them say that stupid rhyme and do that stupid little dance that dodo my god <laughs> The dodo is a very nice fellow. I don't. Sosa's pretty I'm, cool. I'm sure he's great, but you don't spend that much time with anyone doing the same thing over and over, and don't come to hate them forever. That's fair. <laughs> That's very fair. Oh. Um, my God. Um, you, who were all those other people? We just everybody, just people we met. We just well, told the Red Queen to bring him in. Well, wait. She goes, wait, yeah, the Red Queen. And she, like, kicks the doors open, and she, like, runs inside, and, like, she just around the corner of the table just, like, stabs the Red Queen with a knife and just starts, like, this, like brutally just, like, starts stabbing her. And the Red Queen is just sitting there, like, getting stabbed. And she goes, and what is this supposed to accomplish? This is no way for a queen to behave. <laughs> and she's like, ah! And she just, like, throws the dagger over in the corner, and she's like, I hate this place. <laughs> Uh, I, I guess because I was still at the room, I turn around and see that this is happening and be, f and I run over and I ask the Red Queen as she is being stabbed if she knows where the king is. She goes, where kings are? Where are kings? I don't know. I don't know. Usually oh, they're right beside wait. the Red Queen. Yeah. Wait, uh, in, in chess, is there a specific place that the king is on the board it's bes next Beside to the queen. queen's face <laughs> oh okay can we can i i think uh, like i don't i think i have a little dagger i have a dagger what if i stab to the side like right to the side of the queen <laughs> it does not it does not hit. no we need to go to the next square over oh. i don't know which direction that would be because my knowledge of chess is insufficient for this but i Benny know it's right you, next to it <laughs> benny tells you we need to go to the left of the direction we were going <laughs> okay cool because uh, that's the side so the king would be on i i guess hold alice back 
and kind of try to calm her down. <laughs> She's just like as we. I this this woman is wrecking this place. I hate her. Why can't we just tear this stupid mirror down? She's trying to destroy the Feywild and the Queen of Hearts I don't kingdom. Think, I don't think it's her. I think Pinkle, Pinkle and Twinkle told us that she's not real. I think Pinkle she's... Pinkle and Twinkle? She, who, who don't worry that? about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, I, they told us, I think she's just I think she's just a dream. I mean, it's why you stab her and she doesn't even notice. I think we've got to find the king and wake him up. And we also like it's this is all a chess game, right? We have to, we have to, we have to win. Right. So we have to take over the king spot, and you can do that because you're the queen. So we'll just help you out. I don't, ca- yeah, right. let's Aren't just do it. Are queens now? Isn't that how this works? I don't know. I don't have a crown yet. Well, I think you made it here. You want a crown? Well, the queen? No, like, no, I no. I guess they'd get crowns. Can I be <laughs> a mushroom like, though? Pro- she just like produces crowns, and she goes. They could be whatever you want them to be. Mine's a mushroom. <laughs> Mine's sparkly. <laughs> like Benny's Mine is gray. Stalker. <laughs> Just gray. <laughs> it matches my skin. <laughs> Ideal. Benny doesn't even wear his. He just puts it in his bag. <laughs> I imagine it's like a deer stalker hat. <laughs> I was thinking, oh yeah. oh, yeah. Or you could put it on Watson. Like Watson, his little ferret, could have the little crown on. Or no, he mine also should has be a little, little paper crown like that bar. Oh. I mean, Watson also made it all this way, so he has his own tiny little fair oh. crown. Yeah, his is much more regal than anyone else's. I feel like. Yeah. Shall we so to the king? Going yeah. to the king. Let's go. All right. So y'all start going sideways. You now have that ability uh, to go sideways oh, yeah. on this map. Um, and so y'all travel to the space that Benny has with his, his newfound knowledge of where things are located on this chessboard. I uh, can tell you the king should be located. Uh, you enter a very um, gorgeous like wood. Um, it is uh, the trees here all vibrant. This really reminds you of that first time you entered the Feywild. Things have a certain amount of bioluminescence to them. Every tree seems perfectly placed. Everything seems the right size. Um, The trees are all spaced in a way that makes walking through this forest pleasant. There are no muddy patches. It's all just a proper amount of grass. That's all just just over ankle height. It's pleasant to go through. Does it feel creepy how pleasant it is? Like, does it feel? No, not really. Okay. Um, it, it's it's very like calming. And you can see it's it's doing Alice a lot of good uh, <laughs> to walk <laughs> through here. Uh, yeah. This like clinching that she had been doing uh, as you started this walk is like easing up a little bit. Um, but you eventually come to a um, little hill, and there's a, tr- a very large tree at the top of it, and you see a figure sleeping underneath of it. Um, as you approach, you see uh, asleep under a cherry blossom tree. In and with an enormous tower shield against the trunk uh, and an immaculate sword that is wreathed in vines of gold by his side um, there is a what appears to be a human male he wears a dark sash with the emblem of a sword Um, the sword has a a great old tree for a handle uh, with the trunk coming out into the the guards and the blade is seemingly made of a lake like the sash is magically like animated too like these things are the the lake has a shimmer like water you feel like if you reached out to touch it your hand would come back wet and the tree you were sure would feel of bark um he uh has a trim dark beard and his beard has a light peppering of uh, silver hair he has short of shorter black hair and upon his head is a crown um the crown is actually the same sort of um, plated dark red metal that you've seen on this knight and on the queen's crown herself. But floating above the center point of that crown, there is a little yellow eye. And as he sleeps, the eye is watching you as you approach. Hello, eye. It just looks at you. And Alice is like, so this is the king? He's just, he's just, we just wake him up? She starts seeming like agitated again. I, we're not entirely sure. This is not, it's not like we've done this before. 
But I would think that waking him up would... If this is all a dream, we need to wake him up. You said there was a part of the items that appeared to be water? Mm -hmm. It's it's on his sash. So there's an emblem across the sash on his chest. And the emblem is a sword. And the blade of that sword that's on this emblem appears to be water. So it's this, it's this weird piece of fabric clothing that seems magically animated and alive like the parts of it are actually composed of the things they're intended to look like i would like to dip my trunk into the water and suck some up and then spray him in the face so when you when you dip your trunk in it doesn't go anywhere like it still touches a surface of the sash the edge of it is sort of wet now Mm -hmm. Um, you might be able to get a little bit from this not enough you can't like Okay. Yeah, like you're not really, it's not really a depth thing that you're sticking down in. I, I mean, I had to try. I, yeah, and I mean, I feel like if you see that, your druid friend could probably make you some water. I don't know. I don't know if I can make water. I can certainly make um, puff of wind. Um, I can also make the faint odor of a skunk. Not that that would do much good. So you make um, a faint odor of a skunk and then a little puff of wind. <laughs> you basically <laughs> fart it in his face. <laughs> I doubt that that I would mean, do it. And <laughs> there's no way it smells as bad as Arla does. Yeah. So. I sm- I, uh, listen, I don't think that is the word. Earthy might be a more appropriate adjective. You know? Just like... Um, so the, the little eye blinks as you blow the stinky air into his face. The, king, the king, like, sort of... And, like, turns his head to the side. And Alice looks at you and goes, what are you guys doing? And just grabs him and starts shaking him and goes, wake up, you <laughs> stupid jerk. You know, we just go for a slightly less um, violent approach. You don't know how long I've been here. She says, looking at you like while she's shaking him. It seems like it's been forever. Um, can I pick up the sword that's that's next to him, the one that has like the gold? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna kill him. Don't worry. So the, I saw Ar- I saw Arla's face. <laughs> so the sword is is re- it has like vines from the tree that are growing around it, and as when they touch mm-hmm. the blade, it is they're like gold enameled from holding it. So you can touch it, but picking it up would mean like trying to like break it free from this tree. And it's like and it's held tightly because of the mm-hmm. gold. Yeah. Okay. Um, can, can I poke the eye? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a very gentle, just a very gentle poke to see how you it reacts. Said you weren't going to attack him. <laughs> so, I'm not attacking. I'm gently touching. So you poke a poke is eye. not gentle. <laughs> I imagine in a very much like a Three Stooges fashion. <laughs> Just, hey, what are you doing? And the eye like recoils a little bit and like blinks a whole bunch. And and the king like is still sort of like sh- slightly being shaken by Alice. And you hear him going, Ugh, huh? what? And as he's like seemingly like coming to waking up, you hear a loud cracking noise. And the sky over your head, you look up and it looks shattered. And there are pieces of it. And everything around you starts to shake just slightly. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, tree stride. Tree stride. Tree stride. Uh, but that's not another time. With, uh, that's it must be living in the same size. You know, it's not going to work. Not going to work. Oh, no. Um, I feel like we should be okay is there, is, the is there a tree near the mirror? Uh, there's not. You were on top of the hill. We might want to take the king out of the dream. Oh. Alice goes, he can rot here. <laughs> it's <No>. his fault. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think it's a good idea. I think then we'll get shattered in here with him. So you see him sort of like coming to and she and... um. You realize in a moment that uh, Twinkle and uh, Pinkle are behind y'all, and they go, "Oh, he's waking up! Uh, time to go!" And they like just start running. <laughs> Where do we go? Where do we gotta go? Where do we gotta go? Okay. Um. I also can. Can we I all run? Am, I'm like, hey, let's go, you guys, and run. <laughs> sure. 
Um, uh, should we bring the king with us? Yeah, uh, I can probably tra- uh, let me see things I can turn into. I can't remember all of my beast shapes. I shouldn't. I turn into something real big that can carry him on my back. You hear Pinkle yell over your shoulder. He's not really here. <laughs> Leave him. Oh, okay, cool. Run, run. I run. drop him and I, I still turn into like a dire wolf or something, and I'm just like, we're out of here. <laughs> he start running. Run. Um, yeah, you know, when you're in a dream, there's a representation of you there, but that's not your physical body. <laughs> um, y'all start booking it. So you book it back. Uh, you realize you got to go back through uh, these areas that you've gone through um, as you're running back. So um, you can sort of diagonally skip the castle again. Um yeah, can we As also sort of diagonally skip the place where we lose our memory? <laughs> or just run right through that one. <laughs> we'll no, see. I don't like that one. Don't, don't like that one. <laughs> no laughing uh, like this. <laughs> so you start running. Uh, you, you you dive past by the castle. Um, as you can run u- through this... Huh? Can I yeah. use tree stride to end up at a tree that's closer to the exit? Uh, you can. That would get you to. So most of the places you passed early on were just grasslands. Was um, there any? I thought that there was some forest before the wall, but I could be wrong. I thought the first forest wrong. you got to was right uh, after the wall. That was actually the the first tree you got to were the um, the forest. I forgot the, the forget, forgetting the place. One. Oh, never mind. Then I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> not going anywhere near that forest. I mean, you yeah. could try to get a tree at the edge of the forest, like mm-hmm. the far edge. We could go yeah. around that square. We don't have to go back down that path, but uh, it's just that would be really now. Yeah, it would just give us quickness. <clears throat> but uh, we'll just go. We'll just book it normal, normal booking it. All right. So I will say there's a certain amount of time you have to escape. Um, Okay, I cast tree stride and we go to the tree <laughs> at the edge of the forest. Let's do that. I'll do it. I wasn't telling you that just so like make sure you cast this spell. But um, I was going to say. I mean, I have it. I have a taking, fifth level spell ready. Let's do it. Like taking detours around certain spaces takes extra time. Was what I was going to tell Sure. Um, okay. So let's do that. We'll go to the edge. Hope, uh, like I'll, I'll probably remember something near the edge and be like there. Okay. So you so you jump to the edge of the, the forgetful forest. Um, you are, are running out of the end of it um, and just as you're feeling like now nah, you're already on the edge of it. You haven't really been in here for very long, but you you feel that pull of like who, who is anyone really, you know, um, as you run you uh, into the next square, which was at the edge of it. Um, you run back into the courtyard uh, where you defeated the Red Knight uh, and there are four red pawns that are waiting there they seem to be like looking over this place where the red knight used to be who's not there anymore and when they when you start running into the area they are like hey who are you are you the murderers no are you sure no you look like yes positive you look like white queens we feel like we should fight you because we're on the red side Mm -hmm. (laughs) no we're we're good thank you all right how are y'all handling? They are sort of standing between you and the direction you're trying to go. I'm personally, since is the sky still like cracking? Yeah. I'm like running straight through them. All right. I have personally. clubs. I'm going to hit them out of the way. <laughs> you're just going to hit them as just hit them out as you run. <laughs> uh, so you can go ahead and give me uh, uh, your attack rolls um, for for clubbing them out of the way, clubbing these pawns. I'm going clubbing. You are uh, queens now, so you do have advantage on your attacks. Ooh. Uh, okay. I will roll that again. Although I think it was pretty good to begin with. Um, that is a natural 20 for a 24. Mm-hmm. So you just uh, smack this guy. He goes flying out of the way uh, and falls to the ground and does not get back up. And then my second <coughs> attack is a total of 20. Yep, gone. Another one just bashed out of the way. His little helmet caved in uh, as he falls over to the ground. And the bonus action attack 
is another natural 20 for a 24. <laughs> and you hit a th- the third one with a club. Not playing around anymore. Really <laughs> taking some skulls. Uh, you've you've just brutalized these three pawns and left them lying down. The fourth one is like, uh, yeah, uh, look like you're red to me. Gotta go. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm colorblind. It's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, y'all bo- keep r- bolt keep on by. And <laughs> yeah, booking it. Uh, you bolt on by. Um, you uh, come across the wall. Um, there is still a hole in it. Uh, the flump, flumpty dumpty is gone at this point. Y'all invited him to the party. So oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was floating around, uh, berating various guests um, when you last saw him. Um, but there is still an opening in it. It's because yeah. you didn't climb it. You actually destroyed part of the wall. So for this one, y'all can just go through if you want. <laughs> Let's do it. Yes, Let's please. go through. <laughs> so you just bolt through this opening in the wall. Um, you sort of solved this one well previously. So it's not much of a challenge at this point. Um, so you arrive uh, into the next square. Um, and as you like run into this square, um, you run through a set of doors. And you are in a courtroom. Uh, and the <laughs> sheep is sitting up and he's like, your honor, my clients are guilty. They definitely murdered that <laughs> night. And, uh, he looks back at y'all and he's like, and they also right. threatened to murder me, which I don't appreciate, uh, to be quite honest with you. But, um, at this point, I think they should be let off. They have already done their time and committed the crime. And this jury is, this trial is a mockery. There's nothing. Uh, so what are y'all doing as he's he's up here making this argument? You don't see like a back to this like courthouse. I'm just going to keep running not, through. <laughs> yeah, if the sky is still falling, I'm running. We served our time. <laughs> um, is the, So there's walls. Is there a ceiling? Uh, there is a ceiling, yes. Yeah, but there's no, I thought there's no back. So like we can just run through. I think. No, there's no there's no door in the back. So it's just a solid oh. wall to the back of the Oh, I thought you said it was open. I thought you were um, just gonna try to yeah. run through the wall. I was like, that's that's a solution I hadn't even pondered about. I, I guess you could try I mean <laughs> what's the wall made out of? Uh I mean it appears to be made out of like brick. Uh I'm gonna try stone shape again like we did on the other wall. <laughs> I'm just going to try a new stone shape. Um, it's my last fourth level spell. And it says, so, as long as the wall is less than five feet thick, um, you can make a small passage through a wall. So you attempt to, you find that this wall does not seem like you open it up and you just sort of continue like opening up through your five feet. You don't know that it just has a back. This place, is it even real? Like, is there a back side of this building at all? You're not 100% sure. I am go I walk up to the is there a judge? There's a judge yep. and a jury. There's a judge. Okay. Uh, it appears to be a seal who's sitting up there. Okay. Uh and says, What do you have to say so for yourself? And he looks down at the dock and he says, Lydia. Uh, Your Honor, uh, just like our lawyer said, we are guilty. We mm-hmm. served our time. Mm-hmm. Um and we are we are ready we are ready to go. We have learned our lesson. Uh, how do you? Uh, it seems like you did the crime out of order. Um, I'm not sure. This is. Uh, we're gonna have to dig through the books and try to find if there's any precedent for this. I'm not sure that there is. So, uh, we, um, so technically we didn't kill the knight because he was at the party. The queen revived him. And we didn't break into the castle because we just walked in and were invited to the party. Um, so technically, we have not committed uh, any crimes yet. We oh. are still in the future going to commit our crimes. Huh. Go ahead and give me a uh, perception or persuasion check. You can go ahead and give me what that with advantage because you made a really good <laughs> argument. <laughs> can I also can can uh, Arla kind of sneak up and? Um, <coughs> Never mind. No, I'll do that. <laughs> Wait, a persuasion check with what? Advantage. So you get to roll it twice and take the better of the two. Okay. 
Uh, ooh, first one's a nine plus one, which is not very good. Second one's an 18 plus one. He says, I gotta say, uh, looking at the evidence, it seems like maybe you haven't committed your crime yet. So, I mean, you're definitely guilty. Uh, you'll need to go to jail in the past. And, uh, yeah, you're, you're free to go. Go, uh, go commit your crime. And the court fades. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Start running. <Yay! laughs> Run. Run. <laughs> and Is so Alice ahead of us at this point? Because she wasn't in the courtroom. Now she's been with you and she's she's just every time y'all come to something new, she's like, What the what are y'all dealing with? What is this? <laughs> what do you mean you already uh Don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Um just run. <laughs> just run. So she takes off running with you. Um you when you get to the next square, you realize this is the square where the Red Queen immediately said something to you when you arrived, and she says, You hear a voice in the sky. Uh, commanding you stop this is no behavior for a queen and i need you all to make a wisdom saving throw with advantage with advantage with advantage with advantage from your hero's feast <laughs> uh wait which i'm s uh which which saving throw wisdom okay. oh my god i'm so glad that's with advantage <laughs> yes. i don't know if that's enough uh, so i rolled a two plus mm -hmm. three for a total of five, and then I rolled uh, fourteen plus three for a total of seventeen. So advantage. Thank you very much. Um, I rolled a uh, fourteen plus one, which gives me fifteen. Okay, I All need right. to do my second one. I rolled the same both times, which so is twelve plus eight, which is twenty. Uh, I should actually roll this for um, Alice. Benny. No heroes these for her. Oh, Benny. Wow. Benny, Benny, Benny rolled a nat 20. So, um, nice. Thrum and Lydia, y'all find yourselves almost paralyzed from this command. Uh, but you, Benny and uh, Arla and, and Alice seems unaffected by this um, are, are sort of free to act as you stop. At, I mean, she's right. This is no way for a queen to behave. What are you doing? You need to be in the castle. That's where royalty is. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Can we pull them or how like how paralyzed are they? Uh, I mean they're they're just they can't actively on their own control move forward um, in this direction. They can only move back by their own volition uh, with this command. Uh, but I'm not a queen, I'm a monarch. A queen so is So Lydia female. Lydia and Thrum. Um, yeah, it's Lydia and Thrum. Uh, uh, I, I am kind of at a loss. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, um, Don't you have Indomitable as a trait for your fighter? I don't i do not know what that means but i might yeah check your features if you have it it means if you fail a saving throw you can just choose to roll it again um would that be under where would that be, uh, where would probably I be under features that? probably yeah features and traits uh, oh wait i could get got okay, a steam marla um i can at least for <laughs> um okay you can Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Let's see. I can. It's. I should have an extra spell slot it's in not here somewhere. A fear or I a charm effect, right? It's. It's intimidation uh, it's, or something. I mean, it's the. It's the command spell, essentially. Yeah. Okay. I do have indomitable. I can reroll a saving throw that you fail. So. Yeah, you can roll uh, it. You try it again. I'm try it for a third time. Try to do that. Um. And I'm sorry. Which one is it? Wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom or? saving throw. I got a 16 plus one. Oh, okay. So um, you are still frozen. <laughs> this is a okay. pretty high, powerful cool. command, but close. Uh, you are close. Um, I have an acorn. You have an acorn. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? <laughs> um, I try to sell it. <laughs> I guess I'll eat it. <laughs> I'm going to try and greater restoration, greater restoration through. Okay. If See if that gets rid of the spell. 
Uh, it does. I can't remember. Um, it does. Okay, I can't remember because yep. it does charmed and petrified. So I'm gonna do that and be like, let's pick up. Let's just pick her up. Let's just pick up Lydia. Let's pick her up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, everybody. There's four of us. We can pick her up. We can pick her up. So let's go. Y'all just lift Lydia up and start carrying Lydia <laughs> yes. towards the, uh, <laughs> the, the mirror. Crowd surfing. Uh, <laughs> Um, y'all run to the mirror um, right as a, a big crack is like tracing its way down the center of it um, and y'all run into the surface of it and as you do you feel yourselves passing through and you hear a, a, a terribly loud shattering sound and as the five of you I guess technically six with the uh, uh, Watson burst through this other side of the mirror um, you are a rain of glass falls down um, as this entire thing that has been stretching up in the sky just starts crumbling down into these little bits it's actually quite pl pretty like it's flickering and it's it's almost it's so finely shattered that I wonder how that would taste as tea <laughs> <laughs> I mean you can try Another time maybe I don't, I don't um, like glass tea usually but you um, you look back over your shoulders as you pull yourselves to your feet and you find that this mirror no longer stands. Um, I so don't like how close that was. It was it was quite close. Um, so y'all head to the, the Queen of yeah. Hearts really wants to see you. Yeah, I've been away for a while, and she says a very long while. <laughs> This dead look in her eyes. <laughs> oh no. I make her a pretty mushroom. Yeah. She starts she starts heading down into the garden. She takes your mushroom and sort of um when she was a kid and you met her before, she seemed um she seems not particularly interested in your mushrooms. Uh, I know. Now she sort of looks at it and there's a little bit of a curiosity to it and she just sort of tucks it away. Um and she starts heading down the the hill, and she goes, "I gotta, I gotta." Ugh, she just like seems lost for words. She said, "I gotta go home." Us too. So y'all head back to the the castle. Um, when Alice uh, bursts in, one you can see everyone here is is very alice acts very differently like everyone else is still very prim and proper the way they had and following like a set of order and stuff alice just like bursts in the door and is like i'm back uh and the people are like cheering when she comes in and then there's like a moment where they like sort of realize and then they like start clapping um in a very like controlled manner and she just like full on running to the front and the queen um you see her like like her face like genuinely lifts um and like alice runs up and like gives her a big hug and she's um she whispers something to her that y'all can't hear as you're you're coming down um but the, the the queen thanks you very profusely and asks um what she goes you've you've done this kingdom a a great service you've returned my alice to me and you have rid us of this mere curse she says, tell me, who, who, is, who is my enemy? Who has tried to take over my kingdom? There was someone called the Red King who was dreaming the place into existence. She goes, the Red King, dreaming. She goes, Vorhe? Vorhe Yusin? didn't get her name. And what I'll describe um, in my slow speech pace uh, what he looked like. Can we do like she, a history check on that name too? Yeah, go for it. Let's do that. She's well, sitting yeah. there like shaking his, shaking her head as, um, uh, he's looking now 13. You, you're not recognizing yeah. it. She's like, he just doesn't know when to give up. Um, she says, yeah, okay. He's, he probably wasn't attacking us. Um, it's still, idiot um and she goes i suppose i owe you some sort of explanation um and so she like invites you to the garden and there's these fancy foods and stuff there for you to eat and she says okay vor okay. is a also an archfey he 
many, many uh, recentlys ago. <laughs> That's how time <laughs> I should be here, apparently. Uh, he asked me to be his his red queen, as he called it, and I denied him because I find his um, warlike attitude to be too brutal for my tastes. Um, but uh, I think he's always harbored a little bit of a, we'll say, a puppy love crush for me. He also has a unique and interesting trait when he falls asleep. His dreams manifest as entire realms um they usually manifest in his own kingdom and his own people have to deal with them but it seems maybe he was thinking of me when he went to sleep and he came here to try to find his red queen once again what happened to everyone who was left in the dream there's a lot of people left so so was there so so the dodo the grass oh, was still there i know party oh, they grass were, they weren't real to begin oh. with dodo is still off running I guess mm. he's gonna finish that race any day now she says <laughs> <laughs> we believe in him we're all rooting for him for he's sure a, he's he's sort of a national hero <laughs> it's been 11 years now yeah it's been longer than that it's been at least a few dozen recently <laughs> well that's a lot of recently mm-hmm She says, uh, well, well, that's troublesome. I may have to send uh, a bit of a um, message to his kingdom. I believe maybe perhaps he owes me for this trouble he's caused. Sounds good. You s hear Alice going, I'm never going in one of those mirrors again. And she's like, you don't have to. I told you not to go in that mirror. <laughs> And she's like, yeah, well, I was the only one that could, so I had to go. And they, you see him, like, having, like, a little side argument that's very, like, hushed. Yeah. Um, off to the side. Um, and are we going to get paid for this? Is this? Are we going to get paid? Who are you whispering to? Each other? Uh, yeah, Lydia through. I'm sure <laughs> Benny would make a huge show. Yeah. Benny would be, like. Yeah, Benny would definitely be, like, where's our reward? Yeah. She, she turns back from this, this uh, and she goes, yes. Um, I do. I owe you a boon. Uh, what, what would you ask of me, each of you? What are boons? Uh, it's oh, is that a question a favor? for them? <laughs> yeah. A favor. Yeah. So a favor um. for from someone who's very powerful can be quite valuable. It could be spells or magic that's within their ability to keep it could be money and wealth mm, it could be my dear queen mm -hmm. the children of the Comorthessa would benefit from some time here amongst your court may we send them here when they are around eight years old to spend some time and learn of the Feywild from you you may it is granted Thank you. Arla? Oh, me? Oh, um, could I? Mm, I'm pretty happy with most things going on, but I would like, I don't have a really great way of finding mushrooms that I don't know about yet. Can you help me with that? Um, she, she takes a moment, um, and, uh, holds out her hand and, seemingly like from her palm she draws and you just see it sort of manifesting from nothing uh, and she pulls out what looks like a plumb bob um, so one of those little devices that just has a little weight on the end of it usually um, for for finding it she says take this uh, this will point you to um, the direction of the closest mushroom the more aggressively it points the rarer it is thank you so much she says it this is, is great. granted. Arla starts to wander away a little bit. Then she remembers <laughs> that she's got like other people here that she's with and then like kind of <laughs> stops. Um, I have no clue. Uh, I feel like maybe 
I know I'm a fighter. Could I get like some sort of magic spell or something? She goes, what spell would you have? I don't know what spells are there. There's so many spells. Do you want like something to teleport? Uh, something to give you special like magic armor or like... I. W- oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, or like the ability to negate other people's magic or like there's... Th- those are ki- the kinds of things that exist as spells in the in the setting. I would love something to teleport so I can visit my friends, Theroom and Benny and Arla, and maybe even visit you all. So um, she she walks forward to you and she uh, she puts her hand on your cheek and she says, "You are an elf. There is already Fay in you." And she actually like leans over and kisses your forehead. And you now have, it is actually some elves have the innate ability to, um, to face step, essentially. And she has essentially, like, brought your latent ability out. Oh, that's so, I love that. That's so cute. Oh, my gosh. Yay. She goes, it, is, it is granted. Uh, and Thank Benny goes, you. I want cold, hard cash. <laughs> 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 we all knew that was coming. We all knew that was coming. Yeah. Uh, that's my assumption on what Max and the character he's developed, given his playthrough last time, would probably ask for. <laughs> so, uh, oh, yeah. She, she brings out a chest, and it is um, the chest itself is like plated in gold. Uh, and they open it up, and there are a number of platinum bars inside and each one um is in the shape of some other some life form from the fey wild so there is um a very fancy like tree that is native to it you see a couple of like strange mushrooms um there are like anthropomorphic like rabbits and other creatures um and she says i i think this should do a lifetime uh in your world as i've come to understand it and uh, he seems overjoyed. Um, Watson like climbs down on top of the pile and is like looking at each one of them. It like bites on him a little bit. You start to wonder if Watson is like <laughs> t- t- trying to tell if they're like pure platinum or something, and how much he's trained this mm-hmm. uh, this ferret to do that sort of stuff. But uh, that is where the story will end. Uh, I want to thank you all for playing. <laughs> uh, it was a lot of fun. Y'all came up with some really great. Um, ways of getting past some of these. Uh, it these really threw trials. me off that we had to fight that night. Yeah, oh. I was like, I'm gonna I throw a, a traditional fight at him. I think. I'm Just glad I had a few, few spells there. Well, it made sense too because in the book, and and we'll talk about this a lot more on roll call. Uh, in the book, there is a genuine fight that just takes place. It takes place between between the White Knight and the Red Knight, but I mean they just have an all-out fight, and the White Knight defeats the Red Knight in battle. And so I was like, you know, I could try to, ma- like, I, I thought about trying to do something where, like, you had to be standing in a certain, like, checkered pattern to fight the knight. And, and all. I was like, just, just have, have a fight. Like, <laughs> to a certain degree, like, trying to figure out, they got enough other weird stuff to deal with. It's probably just fine <laughs> to take something on and see if they can defeat it. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. That's some really great you. requests for your boons. <laughs> I was interested in what everybody would ask for. Yeah, that was really fun. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jonathan. That was awesome. I really loved that campaign. It was fun. Yeah, I like that one. I will say I was amazed at how quickly you figured out the the coronation (laughs) puzzle and how many people it takes to go there. That was all all three. (laughs) Well, I I thought, like, I don't know if you saw me mouth, like, and I like I was like doing the math, and I was like, I bet that that's got to be a thing. Oh, I just typed in ninety times nine into Google, and it gave me eight hundred and ten. There's no way yeah. I do math like that in my head. Oh, I did that. <laughs> I was like, it's eight hundred and ten, and I was gonna, like, yeah, I'm glad we counted really fast. But yeah, I wasn't sure who else we could have brought. I'm glad I brought the grass, so party that grass. That was awesome. I mean, really, you could have asked for anyone, and a dream version of them would have manifested. But I was, sure. I was also fascinating to watch y'all. Like, I think we like <laughs> thinking back on it. We could have just asked for like the other chess pieces. Yeah, like, probably. I was thinking if that was the the actual like true solution that you brought in the other <laughs> chess pieces from. Yeah. You know. Well, so side. yeah, the I mean. So like the other one, we talked about this previously, like everything just had like a pass mechanic and the pass mechanic for that one was just 
they get nine more people to the party and um i knew there would you could invite them and people would show up if you like asked the red queen to invite them like went through some sort of inviting channel to like ask for them to come um so i was like i don't know you could invite people they could make illusions of people here like they could summon things whatever they whatever they come up with all of it would be fine yeah well (laughs) we can definitely talk yeah we can talk more about it on roll call which will be we have roll call this thursday which will be not about this show but about winnie the 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 pooh one shot uh we're still a little behind but we'll catch back up soon um and we also obviously have archival adventures coming up on probably wednesday right well uh, yeah it'll still be wednesday i'm looking at moving it to thursdays but we have logistics to work out on that uh so wednesday at 2 30. yeah and if you want to join us here uh, i'm sure you've seen the moo bot uh in chat but you can uh, fill out a form at bit.ly slash role of play with capital R and capital P. And you can also email us at role of play dash G at vt.edu. And I want to thank Kayla, our wonderful producer who has done a lot of work tonight and like made everything, made all the magic happen and all of that. And of course, Max, who's not here with us right now, but you know, we, we miss him already. Max. Yeah. Yeah. Hope everything Hey, maybe he yeah. can let us it's know if him. he comes to if he's able to come to roll call. Maybe he can let us know what Benny would Benny would have really for. chosen. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, he yeah. Pr- I feel like he might have asked for something very fancy, knowing Max. Uh, I, I mean, feel like I feel like Max might have had like, I want to find the true location of this criminal I've been chasing for years or something. That was oh, also yeah, something I thought about him that. asking for. Um, so yeah, I'm I am genuinely curious about what Max would have asked for for uh, just mm-hmm. the Hound of the Baskervilles to. Yeah. <laughs> bound along beside him hey, oh speaking of which our <laughs> next a, that's a, segue. a great segue <laughs> the next role of play will be on uh sherlock holmes so uh led by the one and only kira who's been in the chat uh kira Dietz. so just yeah exciting times for two weeks from now and oh sorry is that spoilers i hope it's not spoilers because i think it probably is in the title card thing at the end here in a second so um cool this has been Oh, it's not. JK, I'm lying. I'm lying a good bit. Um, thanks, y'all. Um, and, yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful evening. We're going to raid probably. Oh, we're, we're not going to raid? Question marks. Pixel Circus, we'll maybe? Are we raiding Pixel? We're maybe going to raid Pixel Circus. Um, so that should be a fun time. Potentially, we can. We can raid Pixel Circus. Pixel Circus is awesome. We should definitely give them a raid if we can. Yeah, assuming that the raids are working well now. We had a few issues uh, before, but hopefully it's all all back and going well. Cool. So, yeah, thank you so much for being here, everyone, and we will uh, see you all soon. Yep. Thank you. Bye. 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 (laughs) This is DM. This is rights-free music that I'm making up on the spot.